on Would I Lie to You? Stand up, Jimmy Carr. Word up, Jerry Christian. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing them tonight, Birmingham Beauty, Jamelia. On comic duty, Marcus Brigstock. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And here's your host, Rob Brydon. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that prides itself on being a liar's paradise. <laughs> According to scientists, certain people are able to tell at a glance whether someone is lying or not. They call these individuals women. <laughs> and the very first lie was told by Adam and Eve when they denied eating the apple in the Garden of Eden. The cost of eating the apple, an existence of pain and mortality. Still, slightly less than a Waitrose pack of four organic pippins. <laughs> And so to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction. And, Jimmy, your first up All right. is revealing. <clears throat> Prince Philip told me I was a funny-looking fellow when I was a ball boy at Wimbledon. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> what, uh, what year was this? Oh, I was about 12 or 13, about 84, maybe? Something like that, ages ago. How did you get into being a ball boy? How did I get into it? Well, I just psyched myself up. <laughs> it's like balls to be. Yeah! I, just, I love it, man. Okay. How does the system of oh, selecting I was in, ball boys work? And I was in a tennis manage? club uh, in my sort of local village, and I used to play tennis, and there was a, uh, a lottery thing, and you could go along, and two people from every tennis club went along. Yeah, I, I thought they were from sort of schools around the Wimbledon area. That's what I thought. Where were you at school, Jimmy? The Wimbledon area. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's, he's really foxed us there. Yeah. <laughs> and you were lined up, all the ball boys and ball girls. Yeah, it was after the, the women's final. Everyone's lined up, like who, hundreds which, of us. Which final? Who, who, who had played? It was years ago. It was the Ivan Lendl kind of era. She, he's woman. unlikely to make the women's <laughs> final. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who was um, Prince Philip there with? I think it's the Duke and Duchess of Kent or something. I don't really know the royals well, that well. Well, that's the thing. It's usually the Duke and Duchess of Kent that do all the Wimbledon yeah, stuff, yeah. rather than Prince Philip, who's got more important sporting events to go and be racist at. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're a ball by Wimbledon, but I just don't think... I don't think Prince Philip often turns up to Wimbledon. He, he, he does. He does, yeah. actually. He told me I was a fun-looking fellow when I was there, so... Yeah, yeah, no... <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's how I know that, yeah. That's a clincher, though. Um, do you have any, any concept of what particular aspect of your demeanour that he found Funny looking. I, I can answer this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all have a go. We'll start with it. We'll go around like that. What's funny about my massive head? <laughs> Did you, do you think you frightened the prince with your appearance? Is that <laughs> he's actually really freaked out? <laughs> the most polite thing to say. <laughs> do you know that that joke works if you don't do that? like a ventriloquist dummy, do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky monkey! <laughs> you go back in the box, <laughs> eh? Right, David, what do you reckon? Yeah, uh, well... Is he telling the truth? What do you think? It could be true because of his face, but... <laughs> I just think... <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. I just think that you've got a very unique face. No one will ever forget you. <laughs> How am I getting bullied by Jamelia? How did that happen? So, David, what's your team deciding here? I, I think it could be true. I don't know. I, I don't trust you. You're a funny-looking fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah see? You see, that's, that's the crucial detail. Yeah. Um, I'm edging towards a lie. Mm. You're saying it's a lie? Mm. Yeah. OK. Jimmy Carr. Well, I can tell you, it is... a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, Prince Philip didn't tell Jimmy he was a funny-looking fellow at Wimbledon. What a moment. Perhaps the funniest man in Britain, known for his off-colour material, finally getting to meet Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Jamelia, you're next. OK. Um... I once stole some toilet paper from George Michael's house. 
Lee? <laughs> was it new or used? <laughs> was it beside the bed on the floor crumpled up or was it <laughs> from a roll? I'm amazed he has toilet paper in his house because he's normally at the gents in the park. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was in his house. It, it was in, in the toilet, not in the toilet, like, on the roll. Just, what, what were the... you doing at George's house? Um, it was a party. I think it was his birthday. You were, were, were any of his relatives there? there you, you think it might well, I mean, what was the occasion? Well, it was a party. What do you have parties for? Well, I have parties for all sorts of reasons. Well, it was one of those reasons. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you steal the paper? A, a memento. How much did you steal, Jamelia? What sort of quantities are we talking about here? Uh, not like the... Just like a square. One square? One square? <laughs> <laughs> and then you did this. That's not a square. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oblong. <laughs> the toilet paper squares are oblong. You know, they're referred to as squares, but they're not perfect squares at all. <laughs> they're oblong. They're definitely longer than they are wide. <laughs> You're the I'm only the... person in the world that's known as that, David. <laughs> Everyone else goes like that, just that, but not you. I say. <laughs> Excuse me, darling, pass me the ruler. I think this is actually an oblong, not technically a square. <laughs> well, how long ago was it? A few years. Three, four years? Give me some figures. Uh, about three or four years. Oh, all right, <laughs> Uh, no further questions, Your Honour. <laughs> False. <laughs> I think if you were going to steal something from George Michael's house, you would steal something a bit better than that. Hey, would you been... want a, to, to take a flat screen TV? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that, there's, there's taking a memento and then there's just being a thief. <laughs> I think you're, you're, you're edging towards saying it's a lie, I suspect. I think it's, Me and Jimmy think it's a lie, but Terry, if you're going to overrule us, then. No, I'm just going to disagree, and that way I'll look great if you're wrong. You won't look great. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, I'm on the, what about I give them your brutal quipping, not me. Oh, I'm on your team. <laughs> right, Jamelia, you're going to have a bit of brutal quipping. Go <laughs> <laughs> on, we'll say that's a lie, Jamelia. OK, so, uh, Jamelia, they're saying it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Are you telling the truth? It is true. <laughs> it's true. Jamelia did once steal some toilet paper from George Michael's house. Um, I bumped into George Michael in the toilet once. We'd never met before, but he was very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, you're next. Right. <clears throat> I worked as a podium dancer at the Ministry of Sound. Uh... <laughs> you were a podium dancer at where, sorry? At yeah. uh, the Ministry of Sound. And what does that involve? I don't, I don't say just dancing. I mean, what did you have to wear, for example? Uh, usually we'd get a, a, a phone call and, and they'd let us know if there was any colour theme. <laughs> and then at certain points in the evening, uh, w they would just gather up the, those of us who were employed to do it and put us on a podium to uh, get the crowd going. And, and what, what sort of tunes were you dancing to? This was early 90s, so, uh, you know, early 90s house music. What? Like what? Name one. Hello. Um, I, did I can't a... help you here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the nature of that kind of music was that they were they were relatively indistinct tunes designed to create an atmosphere across the entire evening. Well, that's a stroke. But I mean, look, for, you know, <laughs> well, there is there is an easy way to tell if if he's telling the truth, oh, which is which is. Would you like to show us? Uh, not Sandra. particularly. Well, come on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm now a sort of moderately plump man in my mid-30s. It, it doesn't have quite the same impact. Oh, come on, what do you mean, moderately? <laughs> <laughs> when to when they find you? Their own people just sort of talent-spotted me. They talent-scouted you? Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, it was a, a part-time job. Now, what, yeah. what, what else were you doing? What other jobs were you doing at the time? I was working on an oil rig. Oh, cats. <laughs> <laughs> I worked, I worked for nine months on an oil rig, doing four weeks on, and in the two weeks off, I would go and do... Uh, is this like, this is like your own private flash dance? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in that area, yeah. What were you doing on the... You were welding, and then you were dancing. <laughs> <laughs> flash dance is based on your life. <laughs> So what did your oil rig friend people, did you tell them what you were doing part-time? Yeah, I used to practice on the rig. You did not. <laughs> It's just a massive podium. 
show me. What are you going to say? What do you think? Is he telling It's got a lot of I YMCA think... qualities, this too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> Not only do I think this is true, I think this is the most dignified and wonderful way for Marcus to come out on television. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, in a way, and unbelievable, that it could be true as a double bluff. But no, 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 a lie as a double bluff, bluff, and he's made it mad and he's thrown the oil rig thing in, which might be true to go with the lie. <laughs> Can I just say, I it's a lie. Of, of the three series we've done so far, <laughs> I've never asked someone and at the end of it had less information than one of <laughs> Well, you're the team captain, <laughs> and I'm on the end now, getting quipped again by your boat. <laughs> you're like Radio 4 panel show bullies. So, I would say... <laughs> Radio 4? I've never been so happy in all my life! <laughs> Do you really think that, Terence? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you that, he's lying. Did you not see the dance move? Yeah. Did you not see his crazy... I was going to say, I didn't believe any of this, but I think Jimmy's probably... Like, that was a move, wasn't it? So what are you going to go for, Lee? We'll say, we'll say it's true. OK, uh, Marcus, is it truth or is it a lie? It is, in fact... <laughs> true. Ah, <laughs> Jimmy Carr. <laughs> It's true. Marcus did work as a podium dancer at the Ministry of Sound. Uh, the DJ's got a lot of requests from clubbers at the Ministry, mainly, can you get that big posh bloke off the podium? <laughs> He's putting me off my ecstasy. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our team have to do is decide whether they're true or not. Now then, Lee's team, take a look at this. This is my kind of town. Riding the express elevator to the top of one of the city's highest buildings, this is the view that nearly took my breath away. You know, it's an adventure to shop in this city. 150 market stalls display their goods whilst over them, tense traffic pounds along the elevated inner ring road. Yes, it's my kind of town. So, so long, Birmingham. He is looking at you. <laughs> so here's the related fact, then, for Lee's team. Jodie Marsh has a degree <clears throat> in golf course management from the University of Birmingham. Now, then... <laughs> when you say related fact, fact, it's not that related, is it? Well, it's Birmingham, Birmingham. I don't see. know, there's two Tally Savalas on a chest. <laughs> Stuck on one, do you know, that you can buy in the joke shop? <laughs> <laughs> what was famous about Jodie Marsh was that hers were actually real. Yeah, she's had an ongoing spat with uh, with Jordan over the fact that Jordan's had surgery and she hasn't. Yeah, because well, I've, met, I've met both of them. Have you? Mm. Well, I mean, both, just Jodie Marsh. <laughs> 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 and uh, I kind of had a quick, you know... <laughs> yeah. real, yeah. You can't help looking, can you? <laughs> to be honest, Jodie Marsh strikes me as someone who wouldn't particularly mind people looking. You know. <laughs> she's she's, she's, she's going to be a bit, bit rich if she gets massively know. offended. Turns up like that and someone looks at her tits and she goes, how dare you? <laughs> actually, you know, I, I'm actually very skilled in golf course management. <laughs> what do you have to do to get taken seriously <laughs> as a woman? Why would she do a course on golf course management? Well, she's a, she plays golf and her love of the game comes from her grandfather, Jasper Marsh, who was actually a professional golfer. The University of Birmingham, is that... Did it used to be a polytechnic, or was it one of the I ones that used to be a 24-hour garage? <laughs> <laughs> I think, to be fair, I think, you, the, I think the University of Birmingham is a proper one. It's a proper yeah. university. Uh, Jody wrote her dissertation on the placement of bunkers on Lynx courses. <laughs> She had to study... No, she didn't! Come on, Rob, you're pushing your luck now. <laughs> what are you going to say on this one? What do you think? I, I can't imagine she's got a golf course management from the University of Birmingham. Terry? I'm going to say it's a lie. OK. Well, I think it might be true. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's off again. <laughs> well, either way, I'll end up being ridiculed by my own team. Um, what are you writing down there? It's a letter to points of view to complain about this show. <laughs> So, you're saying it's a lie? We'll say it's a lie. You say it's a lie. OK, well, it's actually a lie. See, see. Uh, yeah, when we all agree, you see. When we all agree. Jodie Marsh does not have a degree in golf course management from the University of Birmingham. 
Golf course management is a taxing degree. You learn all about golf course design, upkeep, groundsmanship, and then after lunch you get a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Which means at the end of that round, it's David's team in the lead with three points. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Steve. <laughs> So, oh, Terry, what is Steve to you? Uh, this is my mate Steve, and uh, we were actually questioned by police who mistook us both for jewel thieves. <laughs> right? That sounds incredibly plausible. Uh, Lee, <laughs> perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Steve. This is Steve. We own a greyhound together that's come last in every race. <laughs> And finally, Jimmy, what's your connection with uh, Steve? Uh, this is Steve. We were at primary school together. I didn't see each other for 20 years and then uh, met up in a hotel when he brought me room service. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. You call it room service. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? I think you're all claiming to be friends with him. I want to see, like, a real connection. So if you could all just give him a hug, I want to see if there's a, you know... <laughs> See if I hug this man like I own a greyhound with him. No, no, no. If he's your friend, if you own something with him. That's it. Okay. This is how we hug. We got that issue usually. Hey. How are you, little fella? <laughs> <laughs> hey, get off. I'm trying to get off with him. That's how we hug. That's realistic. Is my mate alone? Hey, look, mate. All right, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just turn around? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Which, uh, which hotel was this, Jimmy, where...? Uh... Uh, it was the Lowry in Manchester. The Lowry. That is a hotel in that Manchester. That is a hotel in Manchester, yes. yes. Yeah. He's the night duty manager there. So he's, you know, he's... You know. He knew you were staying in the hotel and brought your room service up in order to renew to your acquaintance. Yes, and yes. I recognised him immediately and, you know... And did you go, oh, my God, Steve? Yeah, I, I mean, he really hasn't changed that much. Have you remained friends with him since that? Yeah, I stay in the same hotel quite a lot when it, whenever. Oh, so I'm... you only see him when he comes to the, no, when you go to the yeah. hotel. No, literally. Yeah, that's fine. Well, he lives in Manchester. I live in London, friend. so we see each other. He's not your friend, then. What do you want me to do? Take him to the zoo? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Lee, what's the name? What's the name of the greyhound you have with him? It's called Bally Regan. Um, and how many times has Bally Regan raced? Six times. And has always come last. Always come absolutely last. We put him in too high a grade. That's the problem. And where's where's Bally Regan uh, raced? Wimbledon. Right. <laughs> so where where does he live? Wimbledon. There are most of the dogs that run at Wimbledon are trained in Wimbledon. Right. So he lives he lives at uh, what a, a kennels. In, no, he lives at the Trust House Forty. Where do you think he lives? <laughs> Dog tracks <coughs> have adjacent kennels. They do. They're Bally very Regan attractive. lives in the adjacent kennels. They, they, trainers right. live around Ooh, dog right. tracks. So right. you've got trouble now. Why, David why? in dog racing, he knows everything about yeah. it. Yeah. If there's one thing, listen, if there's one thing I'm going to always beat David on, it's dog racing. I'm often down at Waltham Stow with me, wouldn't buy. Uh, what? <laughs> Run, you little bastard, or I'll shoot so how you. How much is it? How much is it? Uh, Where are the it... pheasants? There's no bloody pheasants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. We'll never catch the fox at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Pheasants? Dogs? Fox? I mean, what sort of a menagerie do you imagine oh, you... I would be imagining? I imagine you would imagine... I'm in my that... castle <laughs> with ten different sorts of vaguely posh animal, all fighting each other, then I kill a servant and have sex with the wall. That's yes! your aura. That's who you are. <laughs> right. Um, how much does it cost to kennel Bally Regan? It costs £35 a week. So why do you share him? Are you... Is it a credit crunch? <laughs> <laughs> um, because it was Steve's idea. So, Terry, how did you get to know Steve? Just being out and about, you know, drinking and what have you. So you met him in a pub? He was a stranger in a pub, you got talking, you're out, out and about, you know... Out and, and about, and you yeah, meet exactly. him. Yeah. You're out and about on a friend-finding mission. <laughs> can you be my friend? Yes. OK, can you, can, you, um, can you tell us the actual situation? Why did the police think that you were a jewel thief? They, they just thought we were sort of dressed like the description 
of um... stripy top. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it was it was in the city centre, and um, what is it? We're walking down the road. Next thing you know, these four police cars pull up, and hang on, city centre, Manchester pedestrianised, mate. You should know that. <laughs> what, they pull up in police trams. <laughs> So we were, walk, we were walking down this road in the city centre, right, and four police cars pulled up. Got out and walked. And they got, they got out. <laughs> and About three miles. <laughs> and they, they, and they, they just said that we fitted the description of these guys just carried out a robbery on a, jewel, on a jewellers. Right, we need an answer. So, David's team. Uh, is Steve Terry's partner in crime, Lee's partner in a dog, or Jimmy's <laughs> primary school pal. Okay, can I can I rule Terry out at this stage? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm happy to rule and Terry I out. And I do at this think stage. Steve looks too well groomed to be from Manchester. Jimmy, everyone, come on. Another thing as well, Lee. I think you're way too successful to have bought half a dog. I think you just buy your own greyhound. <laughs> just, I think it's Jimmy. You think it's Jimmy? I think it's greyhound. I think I'm edging towards Jimmy it's because I Jimmy. think Jimmy looked a little bit put upon when when you were sort of having a go at what you know what a essentially bad friend he is. <laughs> <laughs> You're very well. It's all for a quick sandwich in a hotel bar, but you know I've got gigs and stuff, yeah. so. <laughs> That's me, isn't it? Yeah. Catch you next time. I'm passing through town. So David, time um, to decide. <clears throat> well, I think we'll go with the majority decision, which is that we You're think saying it's, it's, it's Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay. Well, Steve, uh, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yeah. The truth is, uh, me and Terry were mistaken as jewel thieves. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, Steve is Terry's mate, and they were questioned by the police who mistook them for jewel thieves. Was it a pedestrianised area? Uh, no, it was in Derby, actually, not Manchester. <laughs> you liar. No, I just said a city centre. He said Manchester. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Rise, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Now, the scores are tied, so there's everything to play for, and we start with... Uh, David. I read 1984 from cover to cover in W.H. Smith, so I didn't have to buy a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, do you believe that? When was this? It was, uh, I'd say, 1992. <laughs> so, <laughs> eight years after it came out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you knock on the door at 8.30 as they opened and you were in there till five? Oh, this is good. <laughs> Or did you pop in and read a no, bit of time? I read it in a in a, uh, a series of of lunch times. Did you find that later on in the afternoon you were really really hungry? Uh, <laughs> I, I, grabbed, I grabbed a sandwich as well. Oh, you were you what, were eating what? and turning at the same. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you can't you can't eat sandwiches in W. H. Smith, you barbarian. <laughs> What was the name of Winston's girlfriend in 1984? It's uh, Julia, as in do it to Julia, isn't it? Yes, I think. <laughs> what, uh, what were you doing for a living in 1992? I, I, was, I was working uh, at a publisher's. Was it really badly paid? It was quite badly paid, but, I, you know, I dare say I could have stretched to a copy, actually. Why didn't you? Because I, I quite like the... the you routine. like the danger! <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm looking at the W.A. Smith and I ain't paying for it. Technically, it's a type of shoplifting, but with intellectual property. You're stealing thoughts. It's very 1984 in and of itself. I like it. Thank you. So, I don't know, what do we think? Well, in 1992, I was having it large, he was podium dancing, and he was reading bleeding books in his lunchtime. He is weird enough to have done it. Let me ask you a question. What were you having that was so large? Everything. Chip, smoke, shake the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, time for a guess. True. You're saying true. You're saying it's a lie. Lie. Who do I trust the most? <laughs> <laughs> There's never been a jewel thief from Manchester who happened to get off. No, I wasn't a jewel thief, was I? Yeah, definitely. Stick to that story. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll go with Terry and say that's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, uh, David, is it a lie or were you telling the truth? It is a lie. Ah, well done. <laughs> it was a lie. Of course, the novel 1984 is where the term Big Brother comes from. The protagonist, Winston Smith, tries to overthrow a fascist regime by sitting in a room with Ulrika and the little one from Austin Powers. <laughs> Next. <coughs> oh, Terry Christian. Possession. OK, there's Possession. a box under the desk, if you'd like to uh, bring it up and read out the card therein. Well, this is uh, some of my hair collection. <laughs> <laughs> Gathered from guests who appeared on the word. <laughs> Rod Hull and Emu. <laughs> MC Hammer. <laughs> and uh, Kurt Cobain's hair. All right, there we are. Uh, David where C. did you manage to get this hair from? I would ask the makeup women to take it off the brush. So they were brushing Emu. Well. <laughs> Do, it just it kind of sheds. <laughs> Could, would sorts, you mind if I had a look? I'd quite like to see um, Come over. some of MC Hammer's little curlies in a regal packet. <laughs> that <laughs> phrase has never been said in the history of that. <laughs> well, be careful, cos there's only... It's what you're smelling <laughs> for. Smelling it smells like heroin. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That's never Rod Hull's hair. Look at that. That's not even real hair. Oh, look at MC Hammers in a little baggy in it. Oi, don't open it. <laughs> That's never MC Hammers hair, I'm telling you. Have a look at that. That's not MC Hammers hair. I know MC Hammers this hair. This is like a really low-budget CSI. Needs to do a little pot. Now it's turned into Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I can see you actually. I would have that insured for two, maybe three pence. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to you know what it's, it's, it's for? I, it's it's tricky. Do you know the thing that really is most convincing is that this is definitely an old cigarette packet. I think I, it's a big, I, hairy lie. But, but now he's, he's doing oh, that smile. Yeah, he's I, looking smart I now. hate this game. <laughs> I think we're going to say lie, aren't we? It's a lie. I'll so. agree. I'll agree. Right. You're saying it's a lie. OK, uh, Terry, is it truth or is it a lie? Get your hair, baby. Lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. That noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show and I can reveal that David's team have four points, but Lee's team have romped to victory with six points. Oh. <laughs> that it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is Terry Christian. <laughs> Terry, you can, you can put the award on your award shelf, or, as it's currently known, your shelf. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>
evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that rewards the very best liars. Uh, research shows that 51% of Scottish women lie to get out of lovemaking. Oh, I'm allergic to bins. <laughs> Lovely image, isn't it? <laughs> and psychologists claim that laughing at a joke you don't find funny is a form of lying. I disagree. I think it's good manners. <laughs> and I'll thank you all to remember that. <laughs> and so, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists take it in turns to read out a statement about themselves from the card in front of them. They haven't seen what's on the card yet. It could be a truth, it could be a lie, but it's definitely a card. <laughs> Janet is first up. Janet, reveal all. <clears throat> right. <laughs> I wrote my will on a bit of cardboard when I thought the plane I was in was about to crash. Oh, there we are. Right. I know, but certainly, yeah, she was, I'd say, trying to make it look like she was amazed by the yeah. ridiculous thing on the card. Yeah, like yeah. But maybe she was amazed by the ridiculous thing on the card, because <laughs> I imagine <laughs> if a plane crashed, one of the things that would perish along with the humans <laughs> would, be, would be the cardboard. <laughs> so, um... Are you asking me to comment well, on I'm, that? I, 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 I think but... he's just suggesting that you should have written your will on the black box. Yes. <laughs> Logistically impossible. Are they locked you in their cabins now? Doing that. Oh. Sorry to argue with you. No, you, no. I, you see, I'm. I don't think that the black box solution was workable either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> When they talk about when they find the black box, what they do is it's a recording they play rather than they read what's written on it. <laughs> Don't you mean I could have got in the pilot's cabin and just screamed my will at them? You could have actually got <laughs> on the radio and say, never mind, Mayday, Mayday, yeah. take this down. <laughs> Was it cardboard and not paper? <laughs> did I it was a packet. A pack of what? what? <laughs> Do you um, always look this cheesed off when you're thinking? It's... I've got so many cogs whirring in my brain, mm. I'm just trying to control so them. So many what? Sorry. Cogs. Oh. <laughs> like you, Rob, my IQ makes double figures. <laughs> I think it's triple figures you're aiming at. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was a film packet. Why, film did you think it, why did you think it would work? I was panicking. Yeah. Bloody plane was crashing. You're not logical, <laughs> are you? What were you writing? I mean, were you writing like bits and bobs to each person, or was it like everything? I was leaving everything to the person I was with. Oh, but he was in the plane. <laughs> to come through me. <laughs> so, presumably, it didn't crash, cos, thankfully, you're, you're with us and, you know... No, we thought it was going to crash. Yeah. And the plane had problems with the landing gear. Well, David, you've heard, yeah, you've okay. heard a fair old testimony well, here. Well, I don't think... Um, Janet doesn't strike me as a She moron. will do by the end of the night. All right. <laughs> and I think to write a will on something that will burn more quickly than you will... <laughs> is a moronic act. But the only thing that worries me was the beginning when she looked at it. it I felt, felt double that bluff. she was acting. Yeah. And when you're thinking all along, she knows exactly what she's reading because it's the truth. I think it was a bit double bluff at the beginning. You think, I think, think it's probably true. true. Yeah. And you're leaving to what's true. I think it could be true. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I just don't think it is true, but I'm, I'm happy to be outvoted. We think it's true. <laughs> you say it's true. <laughs> Janet, is it fact or fiction? True. Oh. Oh. Yes, I was Yes, it's all true. Janet wrote her will on a bit of cardboard when she thought the plane she was on was about to crash. Passengers heard a terrifying whining noise, an unearthly screeching. It was Janet asking for an extra blanket. <laughs> uh, Davina is next up. Davina, reveal all. Yes. <clears throat> I have two chilies tattooed on my back, but I'm having them covered up because they look like carrots. Lee's team, what do you think of that faltering delivery? Well, wh whereabouts are they on your back? Um, they're on this side. I know where the back is. So <laughs> down on my shoulder. When did you have them done? Uh, 15 
20 years ago. Why, why did you choose the two red chilies? Um, I was in Bali. And uh, we were uh, on an island um, called Lombok. We? I don't remember this. And Lombok... <laughs> Just doing my drinking face. I know you've got tattoos. What are the other tattoos? Um, horns. Where's that? Uh, on my hips. One on each side? Yeah. <laughs> what, so your belly button looks like a ram's nose? Not my belly button. Yeah. What? <laughs> she said, not my belly button. <laughs> Nice. What can I say? Hey, a bit of sauce yeah. from McCall. I like it. <laughs> Did you choose chilies so that if a bloke came across him, he'd think, she's hot stuff? Yeah, but I would think that if people didn't think they were carrots. <laughs> Either that or here's something I don't want in my mouth for too long. <laughs> so you were in Bar... Who were you in Bali with? My boyfriend at the time. Change now? Yeah. Right, okay. years ago. Didn't work years out. Ago. Well, that's and fair enough. So Lee. you went. You're, you're right, right with that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Fifteen years ago. <laughs> Relationships <laughs> change, you know. No, no, I'm starting to dislike you. <laughs> what do you reckon? What do you think, Janet? Like, fib, fib, big fib. Ahmed, lie, definitely. Ahmed says it like he's passing sentence. <laughs> uh, I actually think it's true, but my team think it's not true. And who am I to overrule her? <laughs> So, Lee, I really do need a... OK, I'll go with my team and I'll say that that is, in fact, a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Davina McCall, is it true or is it a lie? No! Oh, true! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was just about to support you. Whoa. Let's have a look, then. I need some to I'll, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get out! Carrots, well... <laughs> Very, very I got done. Yeah. Give me a moment now just to let the blood come back to my head. Um, <laughs> yes, it's true. Davina is having her tattoos of chilies covered up because they look like carrots. Davina was inspired to have the chilies done after a wild holiday in Lombok, Indonesia. Similarly, David has a very striking tattoo on the small of his back of the wonderful Tiverton Steam Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Omid, your turn to confess all. It says, read with accent. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a bomb strapped under my shirt? <laughs> That's a very poor choice. That's a very poor choice. Um... No, no, that, that's, that's obviously a lie. <laughs> I am launching my own range of condiments, including Omid Jalili Piccolili. <laughs> so, take... If you're not, you've got to. <laughs> <laughs> who, who approached you about launching a range of condiments? Uh, Penguin Books. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. They, they, that's where their money comes from. <laughs> Barry Norman has a range of pickled onions out. Through Penguin Books? I don't know about Penguin Books, well, yes, but Barry yes. Norman does have jars of pickled onions. Well, on like Paul Newman no, with his salad. No, he does. Salad, yeah. It was. That, that was the idea. They were trying to make this Paul Newman thing happen. I said, I've only done a few bit parts and a few films, and they said, well, you're quite well known in comedy, and we're trying to get this new thing, Jalili Piccolili. There'll be other, other uh, products as well, Jalili Chili, all kinds of things with Lily at the end. So yeah. why, why did Penguin Books... I mean, just... <laughs> is it... Is it to go with a book? They wanted me to write a book, but I didn't feel I was old enough or experienced enough to write anything about my life. So, so... you said, how about I do some sort of sauces and spices and... <laughs> uh, I didn't. They did. They, there was somebody who was in the meeting who has a sideline in condiments. So Penry Book said, we'd love you to do a book. And you said, no, no. <laughs> I won't do a book. OK. Oh, dear, he won't do a book. That was a good idea. Any chance of some condiments? Because... <laughs> next door, there's a guy and basically what he's just been working on, some pickled onions with Barry Norman. <laughs> and, you know, he was brilliantly, your name rhymes with some condiments. <laughs> yes. Particularly Piccolili, which we're, we're trying to introduce to a new generation. Reintroduce yeah, That's not his real yeah. name. His real surname is Jabasco Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not really prepared confused. to say anymore. Absolute. I think it's gone so weird that I it's think, true. I, I think. Th well, stranger things have happened, but I think only but about six ever. <laughs> The, 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 the books thing is can't the be true. Is it can't so, be true, can it's, it? It's such a strange thing to make up if it's a lie that it makes me think it's true. I, you see, I think what I'm worried that we're in danger of doing here is say, <laughs> having heard something that is absurd and obviously not true, and saying that therefore it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, what's it going to be? I think we think it's going. It's uh, a lie, but I'd like to say if it is true, it's what a wonderful world. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. It's a okay, lie, yes. Omid Lily, is it fact or is it fiction? It's absolute crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Omid is not launching his own range of condiments, including Omid Jalili Pick a Lily. That's quite clearly a lie. Actually, Omid did once release his gentleman's relish in a supermarket. <laughs> To this day, he's banned from Asda. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, where I will be reading out some strange celebrity facts. But will I be lying through my teeth or telling the truth through my teeth? Uh, Lee's team, take a look at this. Seems to me that it's highly likely that pigeons, like any other sort of bird, are going to have regional accents. We've got a, a pigeon here in Scotland that was born ten years ago and has lived in Scotland ever since. So we're going to get quite a nice pronounced Scots accent with a bit of luck. <laughs> if you keep going south and drop down maybe... maybe even as far south as Putney, you're going to get a nice Cockney accent developing from your pigeons. <laughs> and there's a nice little wind shop. There we are. I love the fact that, you know, how much they patronise me on this show. We're 4 0 down, and yes. I'm thinking, give Lee a chance, ask him a question about pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> we'll understand that. He's from oh, the it's normal. more than that. That's your dad filmed two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's dead. <laughs> Was he dead two weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, actually, no. Right, fine. <laughs> Yeah. Good point, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so, here is the related fact for Lee's team. Uh, Mike Tyson once rented a hotel suite for his eight favourite pigeons. Do you believe that, Lee's team? It's been well documented that Mike Tyson breeds pigeons. So they have their own suite? Sure. Yes. Why the pigeon, like, call down for room service? The woman on reception must be going, it's just a dialing tone. <laughs> 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 this is a world in which the pigeon has lifted the receiver and pressed the button for room service. He invited several journalists up to his hotel suite where the eight pigeons were perched on the wardrobe in the bedroom, and he said to one of the journalists, be careful where you fit. I, well, that's... That's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's who that... That's that British one. That's um, Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank, yes. Yeah, it's a shame it isn't about Chris, because I can do a very good Chris. Oh, um, that's be really good. I know, it's such a shame it's about bloody Tyson, isn't it? <laughs> do the same, do the same thing in Wogan. Do Teddy Wogan. Oh, be careful where you sit. Uh, <laughs> Franz Ferdinand. Um, <laughs> Um, Davina, you, I, I've heard uh, you do a very good pigeon impression. And if that's true, I'd love to hear it. It's going to shit on the bonnet of a car, isn't it? I'm <laughs> <laughs> impressed with how you're centering yourself. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I spoke over it. <laughs> do it again, again, do it again. Great. Oh, lovely. Well done. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> so, Lee, what you, that's something you guess, then. Is, is it true or is it a lie? I, you think that he would actually book a hotel for his pigeons? He loves them that much, he'd book a hotel room for them. You're oh, paving the way for me to be in the doghouse again, aren't you? Is that a child line? No. <laughs> We've got a noise point. <laughs> No, I'm just working out. Right. You're already regretting you. having me on your team. I didn't and if have I get a choice. This wrong... 
I've been in a room with him and he's got such a scary atmosphere around him. I can imagine something like that would be true. You think it's true? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's, think it's true. true. Okay. I don't think it's true, but you're I'm going to go with my team again. The team so, so far, the re track record has been brilliant. <laughs> the team are saying true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Tyson did once rent a hotel suite for his eight favourite pigeons. Which means, at the end of that round, it's uh, David in the lead by four points to one. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it'll be up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Sadie. <laughs> So, Lee, what is Sadie to you? This is Sadie. She's my children's nanny, and the first time I met her, I ran over her foot. <laughs> OK. Omid? Um, this is Sadie, and I employ her to massage my dog. <laughs> and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, Janet. Sadie came to my 60th birthday party, pretended to be a waitress so she could lick Daniel Craig's plate. <laughs> so, there we have it. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? Can I just check? Do you know Lee? Uh, have you been to his I, house? I, I, I can just about remember his name. <laughs> well, do you know his nanny? No. Okay. I, I because if I knew Lee's nanny, I'd either have gone, that's Lee's nanny, <laughs> She's my children's nanny. I'm not a complete moron. <laughs> She's not my nanny. Uh, now, this, this running over the foot business. Yeah. Uh, that was the first time you met her. Correct. Uh, and the circumstances were? Uh, I was in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and she was on the driveway. Correct. W what happened immediately after the foot running over moment? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> That was my foot! <laughs> well, you see, she's laughing quite a lot now, as if, like, I have to laugh, he's my employer. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't, as it were, how you met her. You didn't run over her foot and say, you look like you might be a good nanny. <laughs> well, it was the first time she'd arrived at the house. I hadn't met... I'd never met her before, because so, so my wife... Your wife had interviewed her and Yeah, and I said... can finish my own sentences. Yeah, yeah. I'm really good at it. <laughs> my, my wife had, uh, had, had interviewed, actually. You're correct, yes. <laughs> Why do you have to get your dog massaged? Uh, uh, first of all, I, it's, it's my kid's dog. We've had the dog for about seven years. Uh, th they wanted to get a masseuse because of uh, arthritis. It's a spaniel. We've had it for seven years, so in dog years, it's about 42. So it's quite early, and I didn't want to pay for a masseuse, but it Couldn't killed the dog. Couldn't somebody else learn to massage instead? It's a, very it's it's a highly skilled thing. It is. Uh, it's about £35 a session. And how long are you going to have to do it until the dog... Uh, I don't... We don't know. It may, it may be indefinite. You know you can have a dog put down for 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Janet, can I just check? Sadie came round to your house. She pretended that she was a waitress. She wanted to lick Daniel Cla Craig's plate and you didn't just chuck her out and go, you are completely weird, you're leaving. No, I don't care. Well, she, she was, was not... There was a lot of people at the party and Sadie yeah. was at the party. I Daniel was Craig party. was at the party. Yeah, was a... Sorry, so Sadie was, a, was invited to the party? Yes. The waitress <laughs> act was in order to gain access to the plate? Yes. I'd, so what I she did is instead of approaching... I through the uh, ins and outs okay. of it. I was being... Why not? I was, because it was my bloody birthday. I was getting trashed. I was having a good time like anyone ill tonight would do. You know, right. just because you're 60, love, doesn't mean you can't, you know, get off your trolley. The question is, why do you think that Sadie, instead of using her position as a party guest to talk to Daniel Craig, which is legitimate in a party, I think you'll right. agree... Right. Go on, have him. really <laughs> getting all my wit <laughs> now. Do you want some? No. Have you met anyone famous in your career? <laughs> really famous? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> if you met Daniel Craig, could you actually speak? No. There you go. She's right. Answer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Are you going to walk over and stand there in answer to every question? <laughs> 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 
bit scared now. Yeah. No, it... hey, I'm most scared because I'm closest. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. Need an answer. So, uh, so David's team is Sadie, a nanny whose foot Lee ran over, Omid's dog masseuse, no. or a plate-licking pretend waitress at Janet's party. Janet absolutely did, couldn't look at Sadie when she walked in, and I thought maybe that was because she really had licked it embarrassingly. It's just an odd thing. Feet. I mean, I'm leaning... Uh, I think it's Omid or Janet, and I'm leaning towards Janet on this one. Right, I'm mm. going Janet. OK, well, let's go Janet. You're saying Janet. OK. Uh, Sadie, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yes, <laughs> I pose at a waitress. Yes, I clear <laughs> Daniel Coe's face away, and yes, Good I licked it clean. <laughs> I just say, Sadie, that um, you sound uh, you sound very broad-minded. <laughs> Sadie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have five. Lee's team are catching up with one. <laughs> Which brings us on to uh, our final round that we call Quick Fire Lies. Uh, Lee's team are currently way behind, <laughs> so they need to make a comeback, starting with... Uh, oh, David Mitchell. Right. The screensaver on my phone is a photo of my living room carpet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody London for you, eh? <laughs> Lee. Is he telling the truth? Well, if anyone's capable of this. <laughs> what colour is the carpet? Sort of, um, a very bright beige. <laughs> I like the fact that you thought beige might be boring. I'll jazz it up a bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Why would you take a photograph of your carpet? Well, um, I've got a mobile got... phone which is the same model as a phone as, that many people have. Yes. And, and I've needed a way of distinguishing it from other people's, you know, it might be left at a table in a meeting and then you pick it up and go, oh, yes, I immediately recognise that because it's the one with the car Picture carpet. Of the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> a beige carpet. I might have done it once I know, he's done ago. something on that carpet. Oh, he hasn't, has he? Yeah. <laughs> So you think... Yeah, I think you've done something. Um, um, right. You might photograph your carpet, but you wouldn't photograph a beige carpet. So what are we saying? True or false? So I think it's false. False. You're saying it's a lie. OK, so, uh, David, is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> well, uh, David, the obvious question... Would you, would you please whip it out and let us have yeah, a look? Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Oh, we, we have a close-up, actually. We've... And there it is. It's true. The, the screensaver on David's phone is a photo of his living room carpet. It's the first time an Ericsson's got a close-up of a bit of beige carpet since Sven went out with Ulrika. <laughs> Originally, David had a picture of his bed on his phone, but got embarrassed about his Hannah Montana duvet cover. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> uh, Lee. Ooh, possession. Oh, right, you're going to pick the box up then from under the desk. Well, you say box. Oh, sorry, the Ooh, tube, the yes. tube. <laughs> this is my wall map of the UK. I have marked every service station that I have ever visited on it. Oh, OK. I can so see him doing that. Yeah. <laughs> this from a man who was criticising somebody else for photographing a beige carpet. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Sorry, if, are, they, are they little stickers? Yes. Sorry? Are there two colours of stickers? There are two colours what of stickers. What do they represent? The orange ones. Th these are the orange ones, the yeah. orange ones. Yeah. And I've also done blue ones. But why? Why? So I could differentiate between the two types but of service stations. Why? What? I'm about to tell you. OK, well, come on. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes Lee likes to finish his own sentences, sometimes not. <laughs> they are basically do two differentiating uh, service stations. <laughs> I use orange if I am heading north and blue if I'm heading south. Or if I'm heading west, I also go for blue. In east, I go for orange. Well, you have headed north a lot more than you've headed <laughs> west or east. I mean, how did you get back here? <laughs> There's about, they're actually equal if you count them. Looks like there are loads more orange. 
Uh, now that one on the in Scotland there on the. Top... I can't believe you know where Scotland is, David. Well done. Near Inverness, as one. That yeah, one there. That one there. Would reminisce about that. Uh, <laughs> do you know, I will. I will reminisce about yeah. that. Uh, I went in, uh, went through to the main pasty area, where I ordered my Ginster's pasty, and uh, my say Aberdeen service so station. No, it was absolutely the perfect temperature. Just, what, this just, is really hurting just, my arm. Okay, you Sorry. Can put it down. One more question. Can we have a look at it? One more, have a look. Yeah. Yeah. One more question. Look? Though. Well, you can don't you, have to spoil it with the details. Can you, can if you want to have a look, they can have a look. Yeah. Can they? Yeah. yeah. These are all motorway service. Yeah. Oh, you're all coming, are you? Well, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's an F and a, an asterisk. Yes. What do they denote? They they note they note fantastic. And uh, <laughs> the asterisk is uh, <laughs> there's not a word. Blows my mind. <laughs> Blows my mind. Um, the asterisk. And how many years of touring <laughs> does this represent? Oh, it's not just touring. I'll do it when I'm on holiday. I'll do it wherever I go. Mm. You know when you said that there were about the same number of orange and blue? There's seven blues and thirty-three oranges. <laughs> You're going to be laughing on the other side of your face when in the next round I say, I am colourblind. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, it's time to take a guess. What Aberdeen service station doesn't ring true. It's definitely... I wonder, with the Aberdeen one, that's right outside Aberdeen. So you stop, you stopped at a service station about six minutes after departing. <laughs> if it's on empty, I stop and fill it up. Certainly, Which 33 I'll, I'll... times out of 40 happens when heading north. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uphill. You could... <laughs> Lie, lie. You're saying lie, lie. quite conclusively. Uh, Lee, is it the truth or is it in fact a lie? It is in fact a lie. No, no. no. Good <laughs> it's a lie. That's not. <laughs> Let me just say to the idiots that come up with these questions, as if it's not hard enough that I put little stickers on a map because I fill up and I like to get the thing. Oh no, how can we make it more harder? Well, I have four of them with blue one, one with an F, and one with a bloody asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and there's the buzzer that uh, signals the end of the show, and I can reveal in a very, very tight contest tonight, I mean, there's very little between them. Um, David's team have won by seven points to three. <laughs> but of course, it's not just a team game. And uh, my individual liar of the week this week is Davina McCall. I'm pleased to say that you'll have another chance to catch Davina's best bits on Would I Lie to Use Little Brothers, Big Brothers, Extra Factor, It Takes Two, Big Mouth, Champion of Champions, The Aftermath. Good night. <laughs>to Would I Lie to You, the show that rewards the ability to deceive. In medieval English courts, the truth was tested by ordeals of fire and water on the basis a truthful person would be protected by God, who would then let them live a long and fruitful life until they died of syphilis, age 22. <laughs>
<laughs> when asked if lying is justified, a staggering 73% of university students simply copied their answer from Wikipedia. <laughs> So, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction. So, uh, Chris, your first up is Reveal All. I have been approached by NASA to be the first man to cycle on the moon. Please, team. <laughs> My first instinct is, why? Because, obviously, you can't go that fast on the moon, so it would be a waste of your talents. They may as well take you, Lee, with all respect. <laughs> and I'm imagining that your insurance is a lot higher than your insurance. <laughs> Kevin, why are you so convinced that it was Lee and Chris that <laughs> got down to the last two? <laughs> anyway... When? No. When? It was straight after Beijing, about two weeks after. Um, but I had numerous requests and I had emails from all kinds of different people. Why did they wait two weeks? Lee said no. <laughs> <laughs> Not straight away. I thought about it for a couple of weeks. I think I can uh, sort this out. It's quite a bold <laughs> claim uh, you're making there, Chris. Tell me, is it true? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Oh, very good. Oh, very oh, good. Yeah. Yes. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. He might, he might be, be lying. lying. <laughs> <laughs> he might be lying. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> did, did they explain why it's crucial to the future of space exploration? Well, to have you moving very slowly on a, on a, on a bike that doesn't work properly? Slowly. Not with wouldn't... the stabilizers. He wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about the stabilizers. It wouldn't have made no, any difference, you, you know, whether it's fast or not. It was about the fact that it was going to be a bicycle on the moon, the first bicycle on the moon. Right. And, and uh, could you be asked? Could I be uh, uh, bothered? Well, it's not <laughs> <laughs> if, I'd, if it had been possible, then yes. It turned out it wasn't possible to Why? do. Why? Because you can't fly a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> How long would this whole trip have taken? There's so many safety procedures, and you have to go through specific medical checks and all this stuff. So it's and too much hassle. They, they were saying it was going to be it was going to be like two weeks of stuff just here. That was one of the big issues for it not happening. Because so, of the time, because it would take two weeks to do that. Well, yeah. But a minute ago, my friend, you said, <laughs> when I put the question to you, mm -hmm. could you be bothered, you said, yes, I would have done it. I would and have... then, because it was two weeks out of your schedule to go to the moon, <laughs> to do something no one else had ever done, suddenly you couldn't be bothered. Well, when I say, when I, say I couldn't be bothered, it was, it was pretty much down to the Federation. There's quite strict guidelines in terms of what you can do, what you can't you do. You can't go to the moon, that's mentioned. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing. <laughs> Yeah. Clause, yeah. clause one. Actually, actually, must train all the time, no drugs. Oh, and by the way, new one, no going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an ordinary bicycle they asked you to do? No, it, was, it would have been a special bike. <laughs> Off-road tyres for a start. Um, Off-road tyres? Well, <laughs> on moon tyres? <laughs> <laughs> There's not many roads in the moon. Or tracks. My gut is saying that that he would have been approached to do this because people jump on the bandwagon, don't they? The thing is, right, you'd have to work... Uh, I've seen the, the... I've seen people going to the moon on the telly, yeah. right? And they wear space costumes yeah. with helmets like goldfish That's bowls, true. right? Yeah. So he'd have to wear this costume like that yeah. and he'd be sat on what he's admitted himself is a reasonably ordinary bike with slightly wider tyres and <laughs> that's an image I... I mean, it'd be like Eamon Holmes riding a tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> so is he telling the truth, Lee? It costs a lot to put a man on the moon, doesn't it? And a bike. And a bike. Well, it does when you put it on the British Rail, don't you? You have to pay two quid for the bike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say lie, then. What are you going to... I'm going to go with my team. If I say it's a lie, we'll yeah. say a lie. Then. You're saying lie? Oay Okay. Uh, Sir Chris Hoy. It is, is a lie. a lie. No. <laughs> it was a lie. Uh, Chris hasn't been approached by NASA to cycle on the moon, although he has cycled through the lobby of a travel lodge so has experience of pedalling somewhere hostile with no atmosphere. Gabby <laughs> Logan, you're next. When I present a show for the first time, I like to wear red underwear. Oh. <laughs> David's team, what they do you think? People are genuinely moved by that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Red is a colour synonymous with luck and fortune, uh, with the Chinese, anyway. And, um, and I... Right. You, Chris, you must know what superstitions you I don't, I don't follow superstitions. You should, you'd be really good, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the Chinese, uh, this Chinese thing with red, um, did you know, none of you looked like you had any recognition of that. I thought this was no, quite well I, known. No, I associate red with sort of communism and, <laughs> <laughs> and the colour bits of the map are painted during the glory days of the British Empire. <laughs> the Chinese do get married in red, don't they? do. They? But you're not Chinese. Why do you find that the need to go for a Chinese custom? Yeah, what's wrong with our luck? <laughs> Horseshoe or something. You have to go for Chinese luck. That's better <laughs> luck. Alternative luck. Yeah. Nothing on good conventional luck. An not, operation. I'm, not I'm not acupuncture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if there are actually any colours synonymous with luck in the UK. I'm not really sure. Why don't you stick two magpies in your bra? <laughs> <laughs> Bad luck. I do oh, actually. I do actually say if I see one magpie, I say hello, Mr. Magpie. How's your partner? Because you have to say partner. You can't say wife or husband. Right. That would be get... assuming that they have a heterosexual relationship. So a magpie. <laughs> <laughs> it's political correctness gone mad. <laughs> David, uh, what do you reckon? Um, it's very hard. I'm a very indecisive person, as you know, Rob. I don't... It's very... <laughs> well, hang on a minute. As you know, Rob, that makes it sound like I'm always coming on to and you're always saying I can't make my mind up. What do you think? Well, it's a difficult one. You're the captain, come on. It's your choice. You want me to show leadership. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm going to Can you go imagine in... if he'd have been on your Olympic training yeah. too? <laughs> Can't get to win. Well, just try cycling quicker. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> just... You're saying it's. I'm saying true. You're saying it's. I think it's a lie, but um, on balance, I think it's a lie. So should... I'm going to say lie. You're saying that your team consider it a lie, mm. Gabby Logan. Is it a lie or is it the truth? It is the truth. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, when Gabby presents a show for the first time, she does like to wear red underwear. Actually, when I'm presenting, I like to wear my lucky pants. I've had them for ten years and I'm sticking to them. <laughs> Danny, your turn. <laughs> Here we go. Whenever someone recognises me but can't place me, I tell them I'm part of the Olympic cycling team. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, what do you think? So, uh, why? Do you do that? Other than, you know, hilariousness. Well, it's kind of that thing where people come up to you and they think they sort of, they might know you, but I'm not one of those sort of really well-known faces, so you have to come up with something. And you come up with something sort of vaguely plausible. For example, I'm the comedian Danny Wallace. Mike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then it's quite awkward if they say, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, I have had different things in the past. Someone uh, asked me if I was Danny Glover. That was, that was quite awkward. <laughs> uh, that's true, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and I had to say, what, the, the black American film, <laughs> film style of the Lethal Weapon series? And they, they said yes, and I went, yes, I am. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I get confused for other people. Right. And sometimes it's nice to send them on their way thinking, oh, yeah, that is that guy. So is, who, which of the uh, British cycling team do you pretend to be? I pretend to be Danny Wallace. Well, of pres the... Presumably you must, right. you must know a bit about cycling in order to, to kind of bluff your way in case they say, oh, that's interesting. What event you do? Well, he knows the basics, like it wouldn't work on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike some of us, Chris. Yes. To be fair, Danny has got the haircut of a man who's just ridden on a bicycle. <laughs> Backwards through a hedge <laughs> on the moon. What if they ask you, do you shave your legs? Uh, well, it's never really gone that far. From where you're sitting, can you see Chris's thighs? Because from where I'm sitting, they are massive. Seriously, have you ever been able to put your legs together? <laughs> To insult myself. your legs per se, Danny. Yes. It's just that if you are an Olympic champion yes. cycling, yes. then that is going to have some notable effect I, on I'm your not, physique. Let's not forget, I'm not actually on the Olympic <laughs> cycling team. <laughs> so you can't go, well, you, your legs aren't big enough for a start, and also you don't shave them. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I, I, I think it's a lie I, because I, I, think I think it's a lie. Yes. I mean, you why know, not just say, say who you are? are? It just comes down to Danny's impish sense of fun. <laughs> um, I think we all think it's a you lie. You all think it's so a lie. Okay, lie, so uh, Danny Wallace, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as we suspected, it's a lie. I could have been part of the Olympic cycling team if it hadn't been for my lack of training, uh, determination, uh, fitness, <laughs> and bike. <laughs> 
next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. So, David's team, take a look at this. Can I have two people from the audience, please? Going to form a world greatest escape. Can you please check the bag. Check the bag if you see some chat doors. <laughs> I have to say, if, if British police want to crack down on knife crime, I think the first person they should search is Keith Chegwin. <laughs> That's a good point, because that, that doesn't look like a very dangerous trick, but that will have been during Keith's drinking phase. Mm. <laughs> With a pair of scissors. <laughs> yeah, I think if anyone that drunk comes that close to me with a knife, I'd be glad to be in a bag. <laughs> Here's the related fact then for David's team. A Prince Charles became a member of the Magic Circle when he auditioned using his cup and balls trick. <laughs> I think we all know that it's got absolutely nothing to do with testicles or anything. <laughs> and so there's yeah, really wait, no thought, need for I've people thought... to be tittering away about that sort of thing. <laughs> He wouldn't have the time on his hands to practice magic. He's got such an important job. This was all in 1975, all David. All the things he's got to do in his day. He's got to talk about the, the buildings and, and make all the biscuits. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then... I suppose he probably found a bit of time, actually. He said... I've met him twice and he said the same thing to me twice. Did he just Two years apart. What did he say? He spent and ages and... talking to somebody. It was a line-up thing and he was talking to the person next to me for about 20 minutes and he got to me and he went, um... Do you know him? <laughs> it's eminently possible. You know, you, he's, you he's got a lot that? of time to piss away. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, look at him. He's, it's, at least it keeps him off the sauce. <laughs> You're saying it's true? Um, well, let me surprise you by telling you that it is true. Prince Charles did become a member of the Magic Circle after auditioning with his cup and balls trick. In fact, Charles still practices magic and regularly makes his crown jewels disappear inside a horse box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it with charm and a cheeky grin. <laughs> now, Lee's team, take a look at this. The automatic public convenience, commonly known as a superloo, plays music, it's centrally heated and washes itself out after it's been used. Tramps try to use them for a night's sleep. Prostitutes use them for their business. They're in there for 15 minutes and then it's all over. The door opens automatically after 15 minutes. Uh, homosexuals use them. People leave shopping bags in there, wallets, their briefcase. Anything at all, anything you think of carrying with you in the day, you'll usually find in the lavatory sooner or later. I know the Bee Gees haven't done much recently, but <laughs> it's Robin Gibb, a toilet attendant. <laughs> Here is the related fact, then, for Lee's team. Gary Barlow has a microphone installed in his downstairs bathroom <laughs> to record new song ideas, as it's where he feels the most creative. <laughs> and it's, it, it isn't just a loo, it is a proper downstairs bathroom. There is a bath in there as well. Well, Gary Barlow strikes me as uh, no-nonsense, salt of the earth, you know, common sense. I trust him. I trust Gary Barlow. And he seems to be, in his pursuit for excellence with the noble ballad, uh, putting lots of electrical equipment in a bathroom so that his loved ones risk their lives for his art. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Gary Barlow would do that. Yeah, it it to yeah it's just a bit like having a toaster in the bathroom because it's where you get peckish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, that I would believe about Gary Barlow. <laughs> Has anyone met Gary Barlow? I have. What I did have. he say? Met him when I did Top of the Pops. Oh. <laughs> He was very, very calm. He talks like Ringo Starr now. <laughs> Hello, 
I'm Gary Barlow. <laughs> um, what do you reckon? Yeah, is I mean, it true? What is your gut saying? It said no. It, it said, said no. it's a lie. It said it's a lie. I'll go with that. Your tummy tells you it's... Yeah, lie. Well, then I'll go with my team and say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? I am. It's actually a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's biggest number one was back for good. His biggest number two was backstage at the Sheffield Arena <laughs> after a prawn madras. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, it's Lee's team in the lead by four points to two. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Sylvan. <laughs> so, uh, Ronnie Ancona, what is Sylvan to you? This is Sylvan, and he designed a household robot that speaks with my voice. <laughs> All right. Um, Chris. This is Sylvan, and he's my masseur, and he was also the guitarist in Simply Red. <laughs> right. All right. And finally, David. Uh, this is Sylvan, and he's my next-door neighbour, and I promised I'd get him on TV. <laughs> after he complained about an all-night party in my flat. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. <laughs> Lee, where would you like to start? Well, I sort of remember a bit about Simply Red. Uh -huh. mm. Do you remember him in Simply Red? Uh, he was a lot more ginger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what? Was he the guitar player, did you say? The guitarist, yeah. Lead guitar or bass guitar? I wasn't a big fan of Simply Red at the time. No offence to Sylvan. Just I'm just curious, though, how you go from being a really good guitarist to, I'm sure, a really good masseuse. It, it is a good point, Gabby, where you don't spend ten years of your life, you know. And it's high up, cos that's how they did yeah. it in Simply Red. Doing all that, right? No, he did play. that, playing the bass. He, he, just, play. he got his fingers against his muscles and, his, and he thought, I'm quite good at this. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone seen any cyclists? I've got an idea. <laughs> David, on average, how often would you say you, David Mitchell, <laughs> throw all-night parties? <laughs> Once every... It's like a ballpark figure. 14.7 years. <laughs> <laughs> so talk us through what happened. There's a knock on the door, I'm assuming. Knock on the door and, uh, and I, I answer the door and Sylvan said, oh, I'm, you know, can you please make a bit less noise? I'm trying to sleep. She says, and at which point I felt very guilty. I said, yes, we made a bit less noise. What, what were you celebrating? Your highest score at Scrabble? What was, what was it all about? <laughs> um, uh, it was after an awards do. What and you just went, everyone back to, back to mine? Uh, not every... It was about, sort of, eight people. So... <laughs> eight? <laughs> OK. What about Ronnie? What do these robots look like and what will they do when eventually they are developed? To be honest, I actually haven't seen one. I was employed sort of as a voiceover artist. Um, do it. I, I, what, do the voice. Mm. Do the voice of the robot, yeah. Well, I recorded a whole lot of stock Great. phrases. Give us some, give us some stock phrases now. OK. Um, my task is complete. OK. What do you want me to do now? Let's stay on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? No, Shall Master. I... Sexual acts are forbidden. <laughs> When you say, David, I feel like I've just been turned down by C-3PO. <laughs> this is really, really plausible. It's certainly more plausible than David having an all-night party. Yeah. <laughs> OK, we've got to make a decision. Can we just have a quick look at Sylvan's hands? Those ah, are his hands. Ah, they are nice. Actually, that was really... a good clue, because Very if good. he hadn't have had any hands, that would have ruined... <laughs> the robot invention <laughs> thing, but not David's, cos, well, actually, he knocked on the door. <laughs> no, I don't know. Nice, Gabby, yeah, yeah. Keep the noise down! I think Gabby's cracked it. A masseuse needs good, strong hands. Bass player needs good, strong hands. I'm with Logan. I, th I think we're erring towards Chris, then, aren't we? Yeah. What are you going to say? I'll go with Chris. OK, Sylvan, would you like to reveal your true Good's identity? Uh, I am Chris Hoy's masseur. <laughs> and I, I used to be in Simply Red. Wow! <laughs> Thank you.
I have a little knot here. Could you just, <laughs> just come and have a little go? Well, no, put some effort into it, man. Don't just lean over. <laughs> My God, David could have done that. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Congratulations. Sir. Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but also against the clock. Now, David's team are currently behind, so they need to pull their finger out. Starting with... Uh, it's Lee. <clears throat> I can't eat custard creams because they remind me of Spencer Whitfield, who bullied me at school. <laughs> David, <laughs> what did Spencer Whitfield do to you? He, uh, pinned me down with his mates and he forced fed me custard creams. <laughs> Why not just beat you up? Why did they want to feed you <laughs> custard creams? Did you look thin? <laughs> we, the kind of lessons we had was, um, believe it or not, in secondary school, right, we'll go around the class and you've all got to tell us your favourite biscuit. One you like, one you hate. And what this... subject was this? <laughs> it was home economics and... Uh... Did you do A-level home economics? No, I didn't do A-levels, obviously, look at me. <laughs> What do you think the effect of A-levels on the face are? <laughs> <laughs> you can see that, you've got the scars of A-levels. The type of school you went to, if you were a boy, you couldn't do home economics, you would have been doing woodwork. Yeah, no, I think you're mixing me up with the film Kez. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a choice between kestrels and coal. I was allowed to choose home economics. You why did you choose that subject above kestrels Do you know why? Coal? Genuinely, I thought it was about money. I thought I'd learn how to use money in a sensible way. And I got in there and it was uh, full of the uh, kids that wanted to do cooking and needle craft. Who were big bullies. <laughs> So, David, what are you going to say? I don't think it's true, really, but... No. Um, you, you're pretty you it's set on, on it being a lie. lie. OK, fair enough. Um, uh, Lee, I, is, is it true or is it a lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, David. <clears throat> the only concert I have ever been to was by Shirley Bassey. <laughs> and where was that? It was at the bit of Wembley that's not a football stadium, but is nevertheless a very large On the room. tube station? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think the arena. The arena? The arena. Mm -hmm. And did you go... Who did you go with? I went with uh, a friend of mine called John. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what period was this? Uh, it was the 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's seven or eight years ago. Was she surprisingly good? She was pretty good. She was... Incredibly loud. <laughs> <laughs> you don't expect that, do you, at a concert? Can you remember any of the songs she sang? I think she sung... I think she sang all the, like, golf things. She definitely sung Diamonds Are Forever as well. Yeah. And I can't help thinking you know nothing about Shirley Bassey, but you've watched a lot of James Bond films. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never been to a classical concert. OK. <laughs> So what do you think, Lee? It's a... Uh, I'm, I'm well, it's a curious one. Well, I don't one. know. I, I can believe... David doesn't strike me uh, as the type of person that... Would go to loads of gigs. Yeah, so it is possible that he's not been to a concert before. It's a lie. Yeah. What do you think, Gabby? He's very clever, though, isn't he? Well, he's not that clever. I mean, he's... <laughs> <laughs> it's all a facade. The I'm gut. actually the clever one. The gut. This is an act. <laughs> when we go backstage, I'm like, David, marvellous performance, and he's like, ah, oh, they fell for it again, didn't they? <laughs> So we're saying, I think, like you, uh -huh. it's a lie. Well, OK, my team say it's a lie, so we'll say that that is indeed a lie. You're saying it's a lie. OK, David, is it true? It is true. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Next, <laughs> it's Gabby. I have a possession. Ah, right, well, then take out the box underneath. That's it, pop it on the desk. These are some of the birthday cards that I've posted to my pets. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Without uh, looking at the cards, can you tell us which Oh, no, the these, these, are all, these are all sent to um, Sydney. No, hang on a second. That's to Jodie. Um, Who is Sydney? Sydney's the dog. Right. Jodie... Jodie Marsh the... lives in a basket under a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Jodie's a rabbit. Have you always yeah. had pets? Ever since I was a small child. My mum actually ran over a cat once, so we never we weren't allowed cats after that. But my 
Seems rather unfair. Was she afraid that the cat community would take their revenge? <laughs> Can we have a look at the cast? No, you Take can't. No, well, no, no, no. You no, can no, look no, at them if you no, want to. No, Chris, no, no, no. Chris, Chris no, would you get Chris. them so we can all enjoy your thighs? Thank you. Walk across the stage. You can't read look them. You the can thighs. just look at the front. <laughs> you can take them and read them, do whatever no, you want. You can't. Yes, he can. Touch those no, cards you and you'll be cycling on the other side you of your face. You can't. The rules of the game say you can't. If you think that's going to stop me, you are so mistaken. Give them over. Hand them over. Hold on to your I can't find them. Cards now. <laughs> Thank you. Now, it's a shame we had to do that, wasn't it? <laughs> we might as well now we've. Well, this one is to Michael. Um, <laughs> is that a pet name for Jodie or Sydney? I don't know. It's sort of, in a way, it's less <laughs> trivial than the pet's <laughs> own name. This is, for, this is to Sherbet. Why is this one to Sherbet? Sydney's real oh. pedigree name is Sherbet Arundi <laughs> Grunschfeld. <laughs> really? And why didn't you Sherbet mention that? Arundi Grunschfeld. That's his official name. <laughs> Sydney is a nickname, and in an official birthday card, you use Sherbet a shortening Arundi. of the official name. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's Michael? <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Jodie the rabbit does this dance where she goes, oh! And we said, she's not showing for the So, David, right. what are you going well, to say? It's a difficult one. I just... <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a lie, surely. I think, it's I think we think it's a lie. We've got to go for a You're lie. You're saying lie. OK, We're so, Gabby, lie, yes. were you telling the truth or were you telling us a lie? I was telling... A lie. <laughs> oh, and that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team have five points, and Lee's team have five points. It's a draw! <laughs> but it's not just a team game, as my individual liar of the week this week is Gabby Logan. An incredible result for Gabby, who's... Uh, Eighth place in the rhythmic gymnastics at the 1990 Auckland Commonwealth Games suddenly pales into insignificance. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>to you, the show that demands each of our panellists lie through their teeth. Now, one in three adults have lied about reading highbrow literature to appear well-read. But, I mean, when you've read as much Dickens as I have, you realise that's <laughs> typical of what muggles do. <laughs> and psychologists claim that laughing at a joke you don't find funny is a form of lying. So, if you're in the audience tonight, uh, prepare for an evening of raucous dishonesty. <laughs> And so to round one, home truths in which our panellists turn over a card and read aloud a fact about themselves. Some are true, others are lies that they've never seen before. Can the opposing team separate the truth 
from the fiction. Uh, Garrel Vorderman, your oh, first okay. up. Please reveal all. On Countdown, if I worked out the number puzzle before the time was up, <laughs> I used to play a little game. That's where I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> so, David's team, what, what do you think? What, what, what little game? Um, well, on the numbers puzzle, you know, you used to do this and press the target yeah. and the number and then the target And then there's a the time up. limit. And then there'd be 30... So you had 30 seconds to do something. Yeah. Well, most of the time, I'd get the answer before the clock started, so I had 30 <laughs> seconds. Before the clock started? <laughs> So you must have despised the contestants. <laughs> Sitting there working away for the whole 30 seconds like morons. <laughs> what I used to do, I used to get my pen that I would write on the board with and I used to go round all the props boys and I used to make them tap the end of my pen and how many could tap the end of my pen in 30 seconds was the game. <laughs> So, how many props guys, props guys, yeah. were required in the production of Countdown? <laughs> well, Joe's been on Countdown a lot, so you know how it, we have uh, someone like Harry or Vince or Stan who do the water Carol, pouring. Carol, 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 and then Carol, we'd... Carol, we had. Oh, yeah, had. <laughs> Did you ever vary the game at all? Was it always the same game? Sometimes. Sometimes, here sometimes we go. Sometimes I managed to get to the front row of the audience as well. You Occasionally, did, did you? a oh, member of the come audience. On. Those people can't move. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did, you actually, did you actually think oh, this game was gone? gone. <laughs> I'll get her next time. <laughs> Was this not distracting to the poor contestants who are trying to do some maths in out of shot? Uh, slightly out of shot, yes. Yeah. I feel sorry for this, uh, this new girl that's doing the, doing the numbers, cos all the props guy must be going, oh, you'll have great fun on this show. <laughs> they would have said to her on the first day, are we, are we going to play Touch the Pen? <laughs> and got fired for sexual harassment. <laughs> We always play Touch the Pen with Karen. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just not like that. Yeah. <laughs> David, what are your, you and your teammates thinking? Is it strike you as plausible? I think Mary? it's flannel myself. <laughs> flannel? That's flannel. a great flannel. word. Flannel. You've been yeah. on EastEnders Trade. too long, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I missed a lot of that because as soon as Cal started describing the game, I had a sort of mental absence. <laughs> <laughs> I've done Dictionary Corner quite a lot. And but I you was... couldn't see me from Dictionary Corner, could you? No, I couldn't. Yeah. Well, what I doubt is whether you would be allowed, when the contestants are trying to work out the math, to run around the studio getting men to touch your marker pen. <laughs> Yes, well, so we think it's a lie, I think. I think we do, OK, yeah. what a surprise. Yeah. OK, Carol, is it truth or is it a lie? It is... <laughs> ..true. Oh. <laughs> now then. Oh! <laughs> and do you know what? It actually is lots of fun. <laughs> so, you seriously did this? It was a ritual, and after about 15 years, it gets funny, really, when, you know... Wow. That but, but, that's, that's, that's what we're hoping with this show. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when I was being really cheeky, I'd take the top off and then they all got dirty fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just like to behave outside of society's rules, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to find out you're an enthusiastic dogger. <laughs> So, Larry, <laughs> your turn to confess all. <laughs> I used to run a market stall... Yeah. ..that only sold hats for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Please, team, this shouldn't take long. Absolute <laughs> <laughs> flannel! Flannel! <laughs> what, uh, what year was this? It was in 19... There we go. <laughs> 19... <laughs> Supposed to go. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, Not, yeah. You don't do it about yourself. No, it was in the 1960s. The 1960s. Yeah. Yeah. And this was your own business. I was a lad. I was still at school. You were still at school, <laughs> and you thought I'm going to hit up the booming dog hat market. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty enterprising lad, I tell you. Can What's you give me some? In Harlow. 
What Harlem. was your top seller? Harlow. The top seller was was a plaid one, funnily enough. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask about sizes, because obviously the sizes of dogs... There were only three sizes. <laughs> what were they? They were, well, <laughs> small, small, <laughs> medium and large. <laughs> 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 It's a complex <laughs> system, Karen. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. My key question is, how did a dog keep the hat on? Um, you put it over its ears. So you crushed its ears? No, you don't crush it. No, well, I mean, this was the 60s. You didn't worry about those things anyway. But... <laughs> 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 hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. People talk about the 60s again. Yeah. In the 60s, it was wild, crazy. I've never heard anyone. It was crazy. We used to crush dogs' ears and we'd think of them monkeys. <laughs> Honestly, crazy time. Did you make the hats yourself or did you buy them from somebody else and then sell them on? No, they were being made in China. They were being made in China. So you had links with China, <laughs> yeah. despite the fact you were at school. You're chasing this life. Was it just dog hats? Doing? Yeah. The main item then in the 60s, for some strange reason, in Harlow... <laughs> was that all they <laughs> <laughs> the moment has now come within the game yeah. where you guess whether it's the truth you know what, or Rob, a lie. All the evidence seems to suggest <laughs> that he's a great big fat porky. Yes. <gasps> That'd be a good name for one of his hats. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's a lie? Well, it's got to be a lie. Isn't lie. It? It's lie. a lie. Okay. Larry, is it the truth or is it a lie? It's a lie. <laughs> A lie. Uh, Larry did not run a market stall that only sold hats for dogs. He was far too busy running a kiosk selling cummerbunds to kittens. <laughs> Russell, your turn to convince us. Right. Um, I used to put my underpants on my head to cure my acne. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds reasonable oh, enough. Right. Um, <laughs> Were they on your head like a hat, or were they just covering your face? I, no, I only did it at night. I didn't... I... Well, you slept... Yeah. ...with, a, like, an underpants mask. Yeah, I'm ashamed to say... Were, were these the underpants you'd been wearing the no, previous no, day? No, no, I'm not a weirdo. I, um, <laughs> I had a system, a tragedy. I was, I was 12, and I really, you know, I was into Nirvana and stuff like that. I didn't want to cut my hair, I had greasy hair. So I thought, hang on. I can't ask Mum for, like, a hairnet, so I'll just whack some <laughs> pants on, like that. Nice and tight, and then I'll sleep, and I'll wake up and it'll be fine. If the pants were tight around your head... Yeah. ..they must have been pretty tight when you wore them as pants. <laughs> must have been. <laughs> that's just yeah. what I was thinking. I think, I think that's a bit of a I've clue. Got, my really waist one there. Is, is, is wider than my <laughs> cranium. <laughs> David, you can't see Daddy. He's all small and withered. <laughs> He's saying he tapers to a point. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> and what made you stop? What happened? Um, I went to the doctors because one of my nipples suddenly went like that and didn't make, make that, that noise. noise. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no. um, and I went there and I was worried I was becoming a woman or something like that. And my mum chose this moment to go, yeah, and he puts pants on his head at night. <laughs> and, and I was suddenly going, well, we're going to chat about that. And the doctor said, in no way will that get rid of your uh, your acne. So I stopped doing it. You had acne uh, at twelve. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah, acne, 12. and you started to get breasts. Yeah. <laughs> It was a brutal summer. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'd have had breasts at 12, I'd never have left the house. Only what? <laughs> like so, David's team. Well, I, I, think, I think it's plausible, because I've worn pants on my head as well. Have you? Yeah. yeah. In what context did you wear pants on your head? Well, I think... Possibly when I, I was, like, looking for something to tie my hair back with. Actually, Joe, what's that in your hair at the moment, is that...? <laughs> Obviously, if I had pants on my head at the moment, they'd be the size of a marquee list. <laughs> what I like to do every night when I take my pants off, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a laugh, as I, as I, I disrobed, all I've got left now, if you can disrobed. picture it, is, is the pants. <laughs> and what I do is I, I shimmy them down, the length of my Come legs, on. first the upper thigh, yeah. then they... <laughs> They cross past the knee, roll it down, yeah. down the shin. I take, I extract the left Come on, foot. Rob, we're only human. <laughs> and then I go boom, <laughs> and I catch him on my head. <laughs> so, David, yes. what's it going to be? Well, I, do you think yes? What? Uh, yes. We, I think we're going to say we think it's true. You're saying it? You're saying it's we're true. Saying he it's actually true. did it. OK, Russell, is it fact or fiction? It, depressingly, it is true. <laughs> oh! Our next round is called The Ring of Truth. I'll read out some celebrity facts, and all our team needs to do is decide whether they're truth or tosh. 
take a look at this fascinating clip of rock and roll star Liam Gallagher. People were scared to talk about what it actually is that makes a rock star. An example of this is Liam Gallagher, who at various points looked quite androgynous. What does that mean? That you have a feminine quality about you as well. I have a what? Feminine quality about you. What does that mean? Well, you're not just some, you know... I'm a bird. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you're a bird. What does that mean? Well, it's like you're not, you know, some 15 stone hog. Yeah. You, know, you, have, you have that kind of androgynous. It's a kind of, you've got, you got a bit of feminine in your masculinity. Have I? Explain. How does that mean? Looks. I'm a pretty boy, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good looking. I take care of my hair. A bit obsessed with my hair. You've got, to, you've got to have a decent haircut if you're the front man of a band, you know what I mean? Liam Gallagher there, talking a lot of sense. <laughs> I think that makes complete sense. He's, I mean, that's the clincher. You've got, you've got to have a, you know, a bit of a Decent poncy band. haircut if you're going to be the front man of a pop band. Even I know that. But that's not... He wasn't Even actually... I know if I wanted to be the front man of a pop band, this would not do. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, might I ask you, with your number one hit single earlier in the year, uh, did you do anything special with your hair? I just try and hang on to it, basically. Beating <laughs> 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 a hasty retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for mentioning the single, oh, Carol. Bless pleasure. you. Bless you. Doesn't alter the fact that Countdown is over. Um, <laughs> here is the related fact for Lee's team. Liam Gallagher once ordered a trampoline from hotel room service, claiming, I like to bounce. <laughs> uh, do you believe it, Lee's team? Trampoline. Ooh. I love the idea that it's true. Now, I think trampoline is a good thing, cos bed bouncing is a good thing to do, is it not? Yes, yes. Jumping. Up and down. <laughs> so, I'd say it was and... morally... I think it's morally neutral, yes. I'd say, bouncing up and down. It's not like recycling is a good thing to do. You know? It's fine if you want to bounce, but don't feel guilty if you're not. He was... Let me, let me, let me give you some facts here. He was staying at the Malmaison, quite a sort of posh Where? hotel in Edinburgh. The problem with hotels like Malmaison hotels that think they're yeah. cool, because they'll try and have got him a tra trampoline, rather than going, what are you talking about? <laughs> This is a hotel. Do you want to order something on room service? Do you want an ironing board? Do you want any of the normal things? Of course you may not have a trampoline. <laughs> <You know. laughs> you might have been playing that game where you ring room service and just make up something really stupid yeah. to see whether one. they'll... Have you not? No, yeah, it's not It's one. really good fun. Well, I like to stand up and say, I'd like some nuclear material, please. <laughs> I think it's absolutely the truth. You I think don't. it's true. I do. I yeah. think it's true, and I think it's true. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. How can I that be like the truth? Because he's clearly <laughs> off his box. <laughs> both think that is true. What do you think? My team think it is true. So I think it's true. All right, okay. <laughs> I can tell you that, in fact, <laughs> it's true. Yes! yes. Results! Liam Gallagher did once order a trampoline from hotel room service, <laughs> claiming, I like to bounce. Other things Liam has done in a hotel room include uh, trashing a telly, smashing some doors and breaking a window. He really is very poor at trampolining. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, David has three points and Lee also hey. has three points. The next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Who knows who they might be tonight? The cook from David's country house? Or perhaps Lee's parole officer? Tonight, each of David's team will claim the connection. It's up to Lee's lot to work out who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Liz. <laughs> start with you, Jo. Uh, what is Liz to you? Well, this is Liz, and uh, when she was a baby, I accidentally dropped her in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> um, accidentally? 
<laughs> there will be time. There will be time. Larry, would you tell us what Liz is to you? This is Liz, who taught me basic bar skills before I went to work in the Queen Vic. Mm, OK. And, uh, David, what is Liz's connection with you? Uh, this is Liz, and together we are writing a guide to the castles of Britain. <laughs> Please, team, where do you want to start? I think we've got to start with Joe. What are you talking about? <laughs> when, I was, when I was about <laughs> seven. Seven? Seven or eight, yeah. Me and my two brothers were nah. looking after Liz, and we, she was a baby. She was about, I don't know, well, how old is a baby? Like, well, that's a nice baby. Baby. You decide, nice. Joe, it's your story. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the oldest looking after the baby? Yeah, that's right. Uh, my, my brother. He was how old? Um, he's a year and a half older than so me. So he was he... nine and a half? Yeah. And his role was the chief leader of looking after the baby? Yes. Yeah. And what yeah. a great job you all did, by ourselves. <laughs> Apart from the dropping it in the pond bit. Why were you near a pond? Because I lived in the country and, ooh, there's ponds in the country, Carol. <laughs> Being rude to Carol Vorderman's not going to get you out of trouble, Jeff. <laughs> How did the, the actual dropping happen in the pond? We were, we were playing catch with her. Oh, <laughs> come on, Pete. You were playing catch? We were just kind of just trying to make, make her laugh, just throwing her to... Right. I think we should move on to castles. I absolutely think we should move on to castles. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the first question, what's your favourite and why, Dave? I have two favourite castles, and they're because castles I discovered as a child. Right. And they, not on my own, they've been previously right. discovered by... You know, <laughs> <laughs> There's a castle in Wales, uh, yes. in the, uh, the Mumbles, in, uh, near Swansea, mm. uh, and uh, that's called Oystermouth Castle. It's called what? Oystermouth I, Castle. I can vouch for that. So. Yeah, but hang on, what do you say can vouch for that? what kind of castle is that? And that's a sort of Norman... I think a sort of late Norman kind of castle with, a, with a keep you're, you're and, right. a, and a... Sort of what do you like about Oyster Castle? In Oyster Mumbles? House. I like it because it's, it's quite a sort of traditional, old-fashioned castle with a, with a moat and, and An a wall An old-fashioned castle? They all no, tend to be traditional. Why <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to these new modern well, yes, well, uh, ones with well, stone it is, it is, It's an... <laughs> It has always been irritating to me <laughs> that very few castles completely adhere to, my, to what I imagine being the typical castle. What was yours again, Larry? I've Larry, yeah, what was yours again? Exactly. This is the lady who taught me my basic bar skills for when I was working in EastEnders. And what are the three most the important bar skills that you now have? My character yeah. is supposed to have spent years working in the bar and pub business. Yeah. So, you know, it's timing. It's not just a case of, you know, Pull a pint. You've got to pull a pint and be talking to a customer, well, taking tasking. money. What sort of lines so, might that, you say, like? You might say, how are you doing, sunshine? Or, uh, <laughs> like... Did you go to her or did she come to you? No, no. You go to her. They've and been doing it for about... They've been doing it like this has been years of... They've you know... been doing this for evidently eight years. I've only been there for a year and a half and it's just an induction thing. So, so automatically did, uh, what happens? Did Barbara Windsor go? Barbara Windsor, we... Barbara Windsor had to go after because she's been there for sort of nearly 20 years. So for 20 years, yeah. then they said, OK, yeah. it's been OK so far, but yeah. we've decided yeah. suddenly... Everybody, every... The first 14 years was great, but now it's about time you had a bit of bar training, cos yeah. we, we can't keep Not putting up with you missing that pint pot anymore. <laughs> pouring it over your head and then your bra falls off. <laughs> we need an answer. So, Lee's team. Oh, is Liz... Hi. Is Liz Joe's pond playmate? David's fellow castle expert or Larry's bar tutor? What do you think, Russell? I think castle. Why do you think castle? Because Dave's an intelligent man and will have lots of little hobbies and stuff. <laughs> this is definitely Larry. It's definitely it's okay. not Joe. That's completely inconceivable. You, you would not give a very small baby to three very young children, who not went, even in the season. Who went in the water to get the baby out? My, my brother Bill. No. Well, because he had the right beak shape. <laughs> Lee, <laughs> I'm going to push you for an answer, Lee. We are, Larry, we are. say Larry. I'll say Larry. I've got to say Larry. You're saying it's, you're saying it's Larry. I, I don't think any of them are. OK. It's true. Liz, would you like to reveal your true identity? I know Jo. She dropped me in a pond when I was a baby. <laughs> We've actually got a photo of the two of you together. Oh. 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 Oh
nice. <laughs> Liz, uh, congratulations. I don't know why I'm congratulating you for being thrown into a pond. And thank you so much for coming. Liz. <laughs> yes. It's actually true. Uh, Liz was dropped in a pond as a baby, and it was Joe who accidentally dropped her. And then oh. accidentally skipped away laughing. <laughs> She also accidentally strapped her to a breeze block and tied her up in a sack full of kittens. But <laughs> that's Joe, ever so clumsy. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, quick fire life. A Lee's team are currently behind, so they need to do better here. And we start with <laughs> David. Possession. Ah, well, you have to reach under your desk and lift out your box. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This is a letter rejecting me from a job at McDonald's. <laughs> Lee, what do you reckon? Could you read it out to us, please, David? <clears throat> Reference CM one one five six stroke P. Dear David. <laughs> Thank you for your recent application to work at the Abingdon branch. Unfortunately, at this time, your application has not been successful. Thank you for your interest in our company. Yours sincerely, um, Martin Danks. And when was it dated, please? It's dated the 19th of July, 1990. And you will have been... I will have been... Mortified. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never really bounced back from that. Um, I, was, I would have been just Stupid. 16. Does that add up, Carol? He's he's fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> At heart, yes. Well, <laughs> I don't want to bring back unhappy memories for you, but what did you feel you could have brought to the company? <laughs> a certain nervous energy. <laughs> uh, a, a culinary snobbishness that is lacking. <laughs> it's lacking. Uh, a, a fear of interacting with customers. <laughs> An equal fear of frying chips. <laughs> I think though, I think Dave could have closed them down just by having people come and get this burger. You don't want a burger, my friend. <laughs> I would uh, not at that age have had the confidence to refer to someone as my friend in that way. Why? Don't look at my face. <laughs> what do you think, Carol? I You're don't think, it, no, I think it's a lie, but I don't want to sway you on this, cos we need the points. I reckon he's kept it. He's a peculiar mystery. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I do, don't like people looking at my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, you're saying... I have to say that I think that's probably... True, it's true, it's true, it's I true. it's a lie. I say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? OK, David, time to own up. It is, in fact, a lie. Oh. Oh. That's worth it. It's a lie, because David has never even been to McDonald's, although he was. I've, of course I've been to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best thing that the next joke is? He went to visit Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please be allowed to read the auto cue Sorry. joke? Okay. <laughs> David has never even been, although he was once mildly tempted to pop in and sample their short-lived McPhezant zinger. <laughs> Computer. <laughs> Next, Lee. I once picked up a hitchhiker and scared him so much he cried. <laughs> David, do you believe him? Uh, where were you driving? I was going from, uh, I think it was from round Nor Norwich area, somewhere there. Round Norwich to. I presume somewhere between Norwich uh, and Yarmouth. How Yom. did you scare him? Um, what happened was we were driving along. He got in the car and he said, uh, first thing he said. You were driving along and he got in the car. Well, that's already yeah. dangerous. <laughs> well, he was sort of running to keep up. Yeah. It was an ice cream van. I sort of grabbed him by the hair yeah. and pulled him in. Yeah. That's how I used to get them. <laughs> and um, <laughs> my car used to have problems because it was a problem car. And uh, <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled over, right? I pulled over and I went round the back because I used to have to hit the engine to get it going again. And we, it all went wrong and we pulled over. So I said, I'm just getting in the back because I need to get a hammer to <laughs> give it a whack. And as I went back, I said, don't... I thought it'd be funny to say, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> so I went round the back of the van and got a hammer out, went back to the front. And as I was walking past the front of the car with the engine, I looked in like that. 
And I just saw him go like that. And he just wiped a small tear from his eye because I think he genuinely thought, I'm going to kill him. And he was a bit worried. He <laughs> made me <laughs> cry. That's a very odd response to immediate mortal danger. <laughs> to, to just slightly well up. That's more of a, I, I, I say. call that a more end of the It's a Wonderful Life reaction. <laughs> oh dear, I, I am to die, it appears. <laughs> Rather than. But just notice a slight, a slight welling up. Ah, well, all things come to an end. <laughs> David, what do you reckon, then? I think the stuff about like, having a dodgy car that he has to hit in a certain way with a hammer to get it going, I think that side of it... Well, let's just leave it at that, then. That's the bit of it that doesn't ring true to oh, me. Right. Flannel. Larry, what, what do you say? I mean, you've got a good flannel detector. Would you... Would you yeah, uh, I, I think... I think yeah, I think it is. I think it's flannel. I think... Well, I, I actually... It, I oh think dear. it might be slightly true, true but oh I'm going to go... I don't... I'm not convinced it's true, so I'm going to go with the team and we'll say it's a lie. Not going to rock the boat. No. OK. Uh, Lee Mack. I say that it is indeed the truth. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Lee did once pick up a hitchhiker and scared him so much that he cried. Even Lee now admits it probably wasn't a good idea to shut him in the boot with the other hitchhikers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that is the noise <laughs> that signals the end of the round and the end of the show, and I can reveal... It's a draw, with uh, five points on Lee's team and five points for David's team. <laughs> but it's not just a team game. Uh, my individual liar of the week is Joe Brand. <laughs> I have to say, I had my suspicions about Joe the second I saw her park in the disabled bay and limp into the studio. <laughs> Fun show, it's Frankie Boyle. Hot from the one show, it's Christine Blakely. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing on tonight, he edited The Sun, it's Kelvin McKenzie. He lives with his mum, comedian Jack Whitehall. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And here's your host, Rob Brydon! Good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where liars always prosper. A recent survey revealed that one of the most common lies is how nice to see you, as in the sentence, how nice to see you, Lee. <laughs> Another really common lie is, sorry to bother you, as in, sorry to bother you, Rob. No, come in, Lee. How nice to see you. <laughs> and last year, a British couple divorced after the husband lied about a relationship with a girl in cyberspace. I met a girl in cyberspace, uh, Glitter Babe 22, and we started chatting. Eventually ended up having cyber sex. Turns out we had a lot in common in real life. I was the host of Would I Lie to You, and she was a team captain on Would I Lie to You. <laughs> and so to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists <laughs> each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction, and Christine oh. is first. Christine, please reveal all. OK. Anton Dubeck and I danced our way out of a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
right, here we are. Uh, David's team, what do you think? Sorry, the, so the a traffic warden were about, was about to give you a parking ticket and you did a dance for him but, or her and he said, all right, I'll let you off. Uh, is that it? That's the gist of the uh, story, uh, yes. Well, where about them this with the... It was outside Harvey Nichols. But, but you can't park outside Harvey Nichols. Exactly. That's how she got a ticket. <laughs> <This is> <laughs> we... <laughs> so I exactly love what you. Wait a minute, it won't take you long. Outside Harvey... So whose car was it? It Your... was in his car. Well, he has a driver. He'd someone had... Oh, right, so his chauffeur. Did he join in with the dance, the no. chauffeur? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of dance was it? It was a little bit of a foxtrot. He's a ballroom guy, you see. And Waltz was my best dance on Strictly, so it was a bit of ballroom. Does Anton de Beck try to dance his way out of every traffic violation? I would say probably. <laughs> was, it, was, it, um, was it an Italian traffic warden who watched what you were doing and went, you are fast, you're furious, you're back, you're forward, you're up, you're... <laughs> I'm doing Bruno Tognoli <laughs> from Strictly Come Dancing. Can I say, yeah. I think that you look a bit like the gentleman in question, don't you? The traffic warden? No. <laughs> No, you look like Anton de Beck. I so have been, has been commented Why don't you on. demonstrate with Would Rob you how the dance me, went? Anton? Yeah, go on. Go on. It's like uh, this. It certainly okay. is now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get quite close to you. Go as close as you We've like. We've got to touch bodies, OK? Oh, something's touching. <laughs> Can I just say, that's, <laughs> that's, that's my phone. <laughs> A little bit of this, I have to stick my head up. <laughs> You go the other way. That's no, it. I do not. <laughs> there was a little bit of this, a little bit of waltzing, yeah. but it involves moving your feet. I mean, a little bit like that, but not quite. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So there we are. Now, what, what do you reckon then, uh, David? What do you think, Kelvin? Uh, I I don't believe a word of it. I don't believe that there is a generous spirited traffic warden anywhere <laughs> in the world. Jack, what do you think? I think she's telling the truth because I know when she's being dishonest because I watch the one show every day. <laughs> and I've seen your face laughing at Adrian Charles's jokes. Um, <laughs> so I'm not I think she's telling the truth. You think she's telling the truth? Yep. And you think she's lying? I do. My instinct is I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Yeah. Okay, Christine. Uh, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. Uh, Christine and Anton Dubac did not dance their way out of a parking ticket. I mean, no one who saw Christine dance would believe that. Uh, <laughs> if anything, they'd probably increase the fine. <laughs> Jack, you're next. Every Christmas, my dad makes the whole family stand up to watch the Queen's speech. Lee's team, what do you think? How many is in your family? Uh, there's uh, two uh, brothers and sisters, and then two parents. You look like you're lying about that. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> so he makes what? five of you all stand for the Queen's speech. We all stand. Speech. Not we'll... just the national anthem at the beginning, the actual The whole speech. speech. So when it goes on, we're all, you know, come on, hurry up, old woman. The, uh, <laughs> the old woman, he doesn't like us referring to her as that either. Right. We stand is that, up is that the only thing on Christmas Day that's got some sort of physical challenge element <laughs> to it? Or <laughs> do you have to hop through Indiana yeah. Jones? Or... <laughs> <laughs> They're just the standing for the for the Queen's speech. But why why would that be? I mean, I know he's why quite he's old fashioned. He's living in a kind of like time warp. He's quite an, he's quite an old dad, um, and he's one of those people like he'll buy spam and sit in the cellar because he misses the Blitz. He's like <laughs> he, he's in, still thinks he's living in a bygone era. How old is he, Jack? Uh, he's sixty nine today, actually. And how old are you? Uh, twenty. So, ba so basically, if you're if you're twenty and your dad's sixty nine, at the point that he conceived you, he must have thought there is a significant risk that this will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, are you allowed to speak during the, the speech at all, or is it very much this is fifty minutes of silence? Did you say fifty? Did you say fifty minutes of silence? Is that the director's 15. cut? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's ten at most, and they pad it out with music and handshaking. Yeah. In terms of act actual fact she's conveying, it's still five and a half minutes, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. And she talks slowly. <laughs> she's bad at it. It's a shit <laughs> programme. <laughs> did, you, did you see that when the Queen met Obama and then everyone was... It was amazing, you saw her face just thinking, please don't talk to my husband. <laughs> Obama said about the Queen that he thought that she was surprisingly knowledgeable about politics. 
and she was clearly thinking, Nelson Mandela's looking well. <laughs> So, Lee, what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking? What do you think, Frankie? Well, it sort of depends on how posh we think he is. I think Jack is quite posh. He's quite posh, isn't he? He sounds like a Korean man begging for help after a traffic accident. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that, <laughs> that almost incomprehensible poshness about him. <laughs> Sorry, is that what comes from that poshness to you? <laughs> More than anything else, an yeah. injured Korean. <laughs> Sounds to you incredibly <laughs> posh. To be honest, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> do you, Jack? Do you get to a point where you're so posh that you do without hairbrushes? I, <laughs> <laughs> I found my depth sometimes in because right, uh, those protest things where they go on the marches and stuff. I did. Uh, the only one I've ever been on was fox hunting. And there were people going around saying, you know, oh, this is a real cause, and you know, there are more names on the pro fox hunting petition than there are on the anti one. Yeah, because most people that sign it have triple-barrelled surnames. <laughs> Foxes are the great way to tell class, aren't they? Because if, if you see a fox in your back garden, if you're upper class, you get on a horse and chase it. If you're a middle-class person, you get your children to do a picture of it. Maybe send it to Blue Peter. <laughs> if, you're, if you're working class, you beat it to death with a shovel and use it to make soup. <laughs> So, Lee, it's time to come down on one side or the other. So, what do we think? Is he telling the truth? I think... Yeah, he's probably telling the truth. Do you think? Yeah. Mm, I think he's posh enough to be telling the truth. Yes, we think he's telling the truth. You, they're saying it's the truth. Jack, are you telling the truth or are you telling them a big lie? It is... I'm going to stand... ..true. <laughs> Every Christmas, Jack's dad does make the whole family stand up to watch the Queen's speech. My father made us stand one Christmas. He'd pawned our sofa to pay his gambling debts. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Dad. A child doesn't forget these things. <laughs> Frankie, you're next. When I was a child, I was scared that my entire life was a book being read by a bear. And one day... <laughs> The bear would close the book and my life would end. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first question is, what, what on earth made you stop thinking that? I, I grew older and more rational. I thought, you That's know... That's a matter of what, opinion. Uh, what, age? <laughs> <laughs> what, what age were you when this rather peculiar thought came to you? Uh, quite early, but then, you know, up until I was maybe seven or eight, I was quite afraid of that. So is it where your interior monologue was in the voice of, of a gruff bear? I thought, I thought that there was a chance <laughs> yeah. that my life was, was a simply a fiction. Did, We've all felt that, haven't we? Did, yeah, but yeah. Not, in, not in a bear society. <laughs> What did the bear look like? Was he like a little cartoony bear or did he look very natural, like a natural bear? He was reading a book, so he didn't look that natural. <laughs> <laughs> it came from a storybook I had, which was called Tell Me Another Story, and it was about a bear reading stories to his little bears. Did you have any, like, relationship with him? Did you converse with him or was he just reading? You can't converse with him. The, 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 the bear, he's in the bear's but world. Can you say <laughs> where? He's <laughs> junior to the bear. You can't... You can't jump out of the book that is your life and talk to the person reading it, can you? You can't say, why is this happening, Bear? No! <laughs> Otherwise, the bear's just going to go, and then, why is this happening, Bear, said Frankie Boy. For some... <laughs> <laughs> the bear's going, I don't like this bit of the story. Yeah, I'll stop reading it, shall I? No, 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 screamed Frankie Boy. Don't stop reading the story, it's the end of my life. But this is definitely not suitable for little bears. <laughs> David, time to uh, make a decision. I, well, oh, what do you think, Kelvin? I, I think it's a massive whopper. <laughs> I really want it to be true, so I'm going to say true. Because I, th I yeah. think it could be. I think it's, I think it's true. It's creative mind. I do think it's true, because I, it's a very odd thing for them to have made up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go for true? Uh, it's, yeah, I think we're going to go you're for true. You're saying true. true. Okay. You're wrong. So, you're wrong. Right. You say that it's true. Uh, Frankie, uh, were you telling the truth? Is a lie. Uh, <laughs> it's a lie. When Frankie was a child, he wasn't scared that his entire life was a book being read by a bear. Uh, a Chinese philosopher once asked me, Am I a man dreaming he's a butterfly, or a butterfly dreaming he's a man? And I replied, 
do I get free crackers if my order comes to more than £10? <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. Uh, David's team, take a look at this. At a terraced house in Ramsgate, a family settled down to watch the television, but the pictures on screen are from a rather special but unusual event. The people here are watching their granny's ashes being blasted into the sky. Her family say she was slightly eccentric with a great sense of humour. It was her stated wish that her ashes be placed in a rocket and blasted heavenwards. This was the event itself. Yes, uh, Granny's gone to a better place. Next door's garden. <laughs> Well, here is the related fact, then, for David's team. Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. <laughs> they offered Mick Jagger, and it seems too good an opportunity to waste, Mick Jagger, they offered... Uh... <laughs> okay. they, uh... It's not up there with my Ronnie Corbett. I'm not going to say for a second that it is, but it was worth an airing. But what would Ronnie Corbett sound like if he was singing a Mick Jagger song? Yeah. <laughs> good on, good on. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> and, and <laughs> it was an Australian. <laughs> Don't try and look like you were <laughs> pleased to be asked. <laughs> All right, on we go. Um, an Australian novelty firm called Trend Connection, they were the ones, they offered Mick Jagger £20 million for his ashes. And the plan was for a share of the profits to go back to Mick Jagger's estate. On top of the £20 million. Oh, oh does he get the £20 million? He gets it now. Now, before yeah. dying, and yes. then they just sort of hang around with some paraffin and... and yeah. the... <laughs> well, these things were going to be... They, they asked Jagger's permission to market small portions of his ashes in collectible hourglasses, costing a million dollars each. Oh. I mean, I know his dignity has not always been that man's priority, but even for him, it is quite undignified to have your remains spread around the houses of a lot of vulgar millionaires and using it to time their breakfast. <laughs> so, so, what are you going to say, then? Uh, what do you think, Kelvin? Uh, I think it's so ridiculous, it must be true. Kelvin's been better at the guessing than me, so I think we should go with Kelvin. Um, so we're going to go with true. You're saying it's true. All right. Uh, well, let me tell you this. It is true. <laughs> Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. Actually, Mick doesn't want to be cremated. He wants to decompose naturally, a process Keith Richards started 30 years ago. <laughs> Which means at the end of that round, it's Lee in the lead with three points to two. is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Terry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kelvin, what is Terry to you? Uh, well, this is Terry, and he built the nuclear bunker in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, David? Uh, this is Terry, and he's the policeman who was called out when I was caught trying to break in through the window of my own flat. <laughs> All right. And Jack? Uh, this is Terry, uh, the mean machine Fraser, and he is teaching me to wrestle. <laughs> right. <laughs> So there we have it. Please, team, where on earth do you begin? Yeah. Calvin, how many people can fit in this bunker? I bet it's just one, you selfish get. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> <laughs> Four at a push. So why do you push. feel... <laughs> <laughs> so why do you want one in the first place? It, it's a dangerous world out there, and I, I, want to, I want to be protected, and I want to protect those closest to me. If there's a nuclear war... I don't want to live. Neither do I. I'm with you. I, I don't want to come out of a shelter and try and rebuild society. And find Kelvin no... McKenzie I, I... skipping yeah. around saying I'm in charge. I have no skills that 
I mean, how long? OK, society is destroyed by nuclear war. Yeah. How long? In this, basically, we're back to the Bronze Age. How long is it going to be before people start pitching panel shows again? <laughs> it's going to be at least 2,000 years. <laughs> to see you in a Mad Max type of society <laughs> as, everyone's, as everyone's holding off a biker gang and you're going, I can think of an amusing reason why one yeah. of these four might be the odd one out. Yeah. <laughs> so, Calvin, there's four people can fit in this bunker. Yeah. So you only have three people in the world that you care about. That is true. So there's us <laughs> two, and who else? <laughs> Ronnie Corbett. Um... <laughs> We can live for another 20 years at the world's shittest party. <laughs> OK, Jack, and why are you learning how to wrestle? Cos I'm a big wrestling fan. I've always liked wrestling. I went what, what kind of wrestling? Uh, like, WWE. Uh, I went to WWE? WWE, yeah, World Wrestling Entertainment. Oh, I thought it was WWF. I went to see... Oh, it's they changed now. They had to change now. it cos the World Wildlife Fund sued them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a joke. That's why they had to change yeah. it. Is that true? Yeah. 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 Do you really like oh, it? Yeah. yeah, I do. I saw a man who was like seven foot four in little spandex undies when I felt alive. <laughs> it's amazing. How Can long you... have you been learning for? Uh, I've done one lesson, but I'm going to do some more. I've done one, one lesson. lesson. It was really good. What are you learning for, though? Just because you want to be able to wrestle? Yeah, I want to be able to wrestle. Who studies this boat. as a martial art? So you see all the posters, right? Taekwondo, karate, judo, whatever. I'm going to go and learn how to wrestle like a big pretend American. <laughs> Jack, can you tell us the name of five famous wrestlers? Uh, the Rock, Hulk Hogan, The Hulk Undertaker. Hogan. <laughs> Go on. Uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, that's he... not... That's a bloody yeah. solicitors. No. <laughs> Benjamin is a wrestler. Is it? Don't, yes. Please don't tell me that you've accidentally been represented in law. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> All right, David, uh, remind us again. Uh, this is Terry, the policeman, who was called out when I was caught trying to break into the window of my own flat. Do we, do we believe that, Christine? I can believe you were trying to break into your own flat for whatever bizarre reason, but I'm but not to, so sure to about... To live it. there, to continue to live there. <laughs> I locked myself out when I, I had a plumber round trying to unblock a uh, drain. I and... find it difficult to imagine you holding a conversation with a plumber yeah. as he did the job. Did you actually speak to him in your house? Yes. Did you have a glove puppet on? <laughs> ah, little David is very pleased with your work. <laughs> so, would you, you like a cup of tea, your little David? Your, your genuine view of me is I would be unable to converse. With a yes. I would have to yeah, create another character. Yeah. So, <laughs> please excuse my mute friend. <laughs> He's, you can't say a thing, can you? <laughs> Anyway, I'm in charge. You, no, that no, sink no. no longer functions. <laughs> Silence, you! Now, you've not covered how the police got involved in, in this whole... Uh... A policeman, a Terry, turned up and I think had been called by a neighbour. All right, so, look, we, we, we need an answer. So, uh, so, Lee's team. Is Terry Kelvin's bunker builder, David's investigating officer or Jack's wrestling teacher? The only thing that's true about any of this is that I do believe that Jack might be into wrestling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I reckon it's got to be Kelvin. He seems like the sort of paranoid nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> might have too much time on his hands. At the minute, I'm going to go with Kelvin. I think Kelvin. he might be telling the truth. Yeah, really? Kelvin. Well, I'll go with my team then and say that... Yeah. saying it's Kelvin. Yeah, OK, Kelvin's right, nice. now, Terry, would you like to reveal the true identity? I'm Terry Fraser, I'm the meme machine, and I talk Jack <laughs> as a wrestler for a second. Now. <laughs> Terry, the meme machine, Fraser, is teaching Jack to wrestle. Now, show us together what come you on, come can on. do. Let's... I'm ready for this, bro. I'm ready for this. I'm ready. This show gets more and more like the generation game. <laughs> So, yeah, this is the basic slam. OK, wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait. whoa! Hello. <laughs> That's fine, Terry. Thank you, you're no longer the scariest person on the show. Are you OK? I, yeah, I think sure? so. Seriously. I've done one lesson, I'm not very good. So I'm... <laughs> You didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> we 
Can I just, can I just ask, during the lesson, did you get the impression that you were annoying Terry? <laughs> So, at the end of that round, David's team had three points and Lee's team had three. <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Now, the scores are tied, so there's everything to play for. We start with... <coughs> it's Lee. If you give me any date before the year 2000, I can instantly tell you what day of the week it was. Bollocks. <laughs> Is this something you learn, or is this the kind of, you know, Rain Man type thing? No, no, I had to... I, well, I had to learn... You learned how to do it? Learned the system. What's, what's, what's the, the system? system? The system is, uh, what you do is you actually just learn... <laughs> learn... <laughs> Wait! You learn one... You, you learn... sat there trying to think of a system. <laughs> and what you're planning for is, you, you actually just learn <laughs> what day of the week every, every day. day is. I can't go back to, like... 14 BC, right? <laughs> right? But I can I can do it right the way back to the sort of 1920s, 1930s. <laughs> and what you do is you learn a midway, so you learn the 90, you learn one particular pit point in 1955, three months in 1955, you learn it off by heart those 90 days. And then there's a calculation that you can do to plus what or minus. What's that calculation? Take a day, one of your, you know, your expert period My... around Suez or whenever it yes. was. Well, you have to give me the exact year, otherwise it'll be too well, different. Okay, I, I don't mind. Right, the 14th of May, 1955. Well, hang on, 14th of May. <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Right. And so, how do you extrapolate from your knowledge of that to go back to the 1920s to the 23rd of June 1927? It's dead simple. Yep. It's seven. Hang on. To the power of two. <laughs> right. Then you take away 10%. Unless right. it's a leap year. And is it a leap year, 1955? Uh, of course not, you idiot. That was 54. And what about... Uh, so, ni yeah, no, of course. Okay. This one year, that is 55 a leap year. Absolutely <laughs> 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 Did you hear that? What an idiot! So, <laughs> well, he's <laughs> Oxford <laughs> educated. <laughs> Nine a year is a leap year. Seven to the power of two. Seven to the power of two is 49. Minus 10%. 10%. Is 4.9, so you've got 44.1. Correct. I was going to say that's, that's, that's not a day of the week. That's I haven't done it yet. It is. 44.1. Then you, you say round it Thursday. up or round it down, which is 44. 44, key of the door, 21. Two and one is three. Sunday's the first day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, David, if you, you think it's true. I think it's true. Thank I, you. I, oh, it's a lie. I, I think, I think, think it's, lie. I think it's clever. I think it's true. There's an easy way to find out. We all know what day of the week we were born on. Well, most of us do. And if you tell me what day your date of birth is, I'll tell you the day of the week you were born. Okay, four, 14th of July, 1974. Is that your birthday? Yeah. You were born on a Thursday. Huh. I do. Looking at the demographic. <laughs> Look at the demographic of this audience. This will be a shock. 22, 10, 46. BC. 46. Uh, <laughs> do you know the day of the week you were born? No. Good. Well, that's Andy. Thursday. <laughs> lie. You just did. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. OK, Lee, are you telling a lie? Of course I'm telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Next. <laughs> Christine. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a Coronation Street star once made me remove all the red M&Ms from a bowl for him. Which Coronation Street star? My mum watches this, so I'm good. Adam Rickett. Adam Rickett. <laughs> I should tell you that, that Adam Rickett played Gail Tilsley's son. There we are. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's really he familiar went... for me. <laughs> Didn't he? He uh, went yeah. to Canada or he went off, didn't he? I don't the watch character? it, my darling. Oh, they okay. just told me. So, Adam <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's... I've never worked with such a bunch of snobs in my life. I... <laughs> in what context did you meet him? I met him um, when he was a guest on a show in BBC Northern Ireland. So, uh, what were you doing on the show? I was working um, behind the scenes, which is what I used to do. What, what as? A floor manager. You did make the move from being a studio manager to in front of the screen, didn't you? Yep, yes. She hasn't made the move to being in front of the screen. That would just be annoying, wouldn't it? She's, <laughs> she's in front of the screen going, Christine, love, would you get out of the way, please? <laughs> uh, what do you think? Lie. And you? Go on, no, what do you think? I think it's a lie. Oh, well, they were, well, my views don't count, they do they? Well, you uh, 
Thanks very much. <laughs> You're saying lie. OK, Christine, uh, true or lie? It is actually true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so how did, um, did this request uh, come through to you? What, what did he say? Well, you see, we get rider lists, as, as it's called, and for sort of big names. What's on your rider list? This is when I'm on tour. Flapjacks, raspberries, a Diet Coke, two still mineral waters, grapes and blueberries. Rock and roll, Rob. Rock and roll. <laughs> you don't look like this without a bit of effort. <laughs> <laughs> what a very particular list of things. Well, that's why it's a list, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your rider? Like six cans of better and a knife. <laughs> Yeah, six cans of better for a teetotal alcoholic. Why <laughs> <laughs> are you Frank and Boyle could complain about the fact that I said bitter and not mention the knife? <laughs> <laughs> Take the knife or don't accuse me of drinking. <laughs> and that noise means only one thing. It is the end of the show and I can reveal that David's team have five and in what we call a tie, Lee's Ooh. team have five. <laughs> but of course... <clears throat> It's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Kelvin McKenzie. <laughs> it's Kelvin's biggest award since Elton John's £1 million damages against him in 1987. Good night. <laughs>to Would I Lie To You, the show where barefaced lying is actively encouraged. Experts say that if you suspect your spouse is lying, you should keep a diary of what they claim they've been doing. Or you can turn a blind eye and that way you get to keep the house and still see your children. <laughs> and it's claimed women in their 30s are the most likely to lie on their CVs, or as they call themselves on their CVs, women in their late 20s. <laughs> And so to round one, home truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them to make things harder. They've never seen the card before, so they have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort out the truth from the lies. And Claudia is first up. OK. Oh. I, um... <laughs> Good. I once put nail polish remover in my fish tank to give my goldfish more energy. Ladies team, um, quiz her relentlessly. What, when was this? I was small. I was five, six when I had goldfish. They were lovely, sweet things. What happened ha to the goldfish? They were fine. They, they were fine. They survived? Yes. I didn't put the whole bottle in. I just put a tiny, just like a little bit, just to give them a bit more pizzazz. I should say at this point to people who might be watching at home or, or just in Dixon's window... <laughs> <are> <laughs> That we don't encourage interfering with fish in any <laughs> way. How many goldfish did you have? I had two. Two goldfish. Did the, what were they called? Um, rabbit and cat. <laughs> <laughs> what was your, was your, your, cat, was your cat, called? cat called? Dog. <laughs> no, no, no. Was your mum called Dad? I was. I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. 
Why, why do you think it would give them energy? Because I just thought, I thought they were looking a bit sleepy and they were never really doing uh, enough hoo-ha. Mm -hmm. So I put in a bridge and what you want them to do is play hide and seek and hide under the bridge and, and then come up and go weave through the, 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 the green, the pond life, the water, the plants. Yes. Um, <laughs> do you think David Attenborough's job is threatened by you? <laughs> Is, is when you put when you buy freshly cut flowers they often say put in an aspirin or some nail polish remover and it'll just make them for longer whoa 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 i've never heard that i've heard aspirin but I not... even, why would you give aspirin lemonade. to a flower it's because they've got a headache it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think head, it's, the, it's the feet that are hurting surely <laughs> So that's when you see a bunch of flowers, you think they're silently going, my feet well, are... Well, no. <laughs> well, what she said is, where the hell are my feet? My ankles well, are killing. You, as, you, as you'd know if you're an amputee, you can still get an itch in the bit of you that's been cut off. You're going to have to work on your catchphrases, David. <laughs> You've heard the story. Um, I know what I think. I can't <laughs> share that with you because I have to remain impartial. Do you, but know, I know. Do you know? We've never, we've never asked Rob this, but what do yeah. you think, Rob? I think Claudia needs 24-hour care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to return to what we were yes. concerned with a moment earlier. I don't know. I can, oh, I can yeah. imagine a child doing something like that. Yeah. I can't believe it would work, would it? Drive it. Distraction. It broke up. Flapping around that big crazy... Well, then it worked, then, didn't it? <laughs> it did work. It did have more energy. Yeah, it going, yeah, I'm yeah, dying! Yeah, I'm yeah, dying! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did they? Did they? Did they? Okay, so what we going for, Kai? Well, I think it's a lie. What do you think? It's a lie. Uh, well, then I'll go with my team and say that it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? OK, Claudia Winkleman. Yes. True or false? Truth it is, or in lie? fact, a true. No! no. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, it was true all along. Uh, Claudia did once put nail polish remover in her fish tank to give her goldfish more energy. <laughs> That was the last time in her life that Claudia Winkleman wasted a single drop of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so, Clive, you're next. Right. I once had my wallet stolen by a walrus. <laughs> where, where, what's the context? The context. <laughs> it, it's not that long ago, actually. I was in, uh, I was in Greenland. Uh, making a radio, radio programme to look at Inuit ways of dealing with criminal justice. And what was the walrus doing? Why, uh, why was he involved, this walrus? There was a sort of a... a I couldn't, couldn't call it a zoo, more than a menagerie, uh, sort of by the sea, with a variety of animals there, and there was like a sort of tameish walrus there. I had uh, my wallet in my hand, cos I'd actually, for once, paid for something on a trip for the BBC. Now, this will be implausible, obviously. Uh, and I put it there, and it sort of picked it up as though it was going to eat it or something, sort of, and then dived in the water, and we never got the wallet back. So. Wait, 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 wait. I have many questions. Yes. Uh, what, were you, what were you buying in this menagerie? You got your wallet out to what? Wait, this is just to get in. I'd taken my wallet out to pay for the... Uh, wait, the, so the walrus uh, is was... right by the entrance? It was a cross... <laughs> no, I still have the walrus to have <laughs> That's crazy. Did you have to ring, like, the card company to say, I've had me... I've had me <laughs> have, have they been stolen or lost? Yes. Or well, sort of stolen. Yes. It, but it was a walrus, yeah. so... It was hard. <laughs> if, there is any, if there's any sort of transactions on it, it they'll probably all be under sea. <laughs> this may be a scam, for all I know, that they then dive down afterwards and... and Identity theft. theft. That's what you're worried about. A walrus... Is <laughs> 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 just, just walking around. Do you remember me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did it... Take it. I mean, what? It, it was a sort of tame walrus, and it sort of. Could you? Could you play oh, me? Look, could, me. You play, <laughs> could you play? <laughs> could you play? Could you play? Which one? Which one? Which one? Very valuable yeah. reenactment. Right, I'll be you. Uh, so I, you're, just, you're just holding the wallet there, <laughs> and it just went. Oh, I'm just kind of knocked it, and then grabbed it in the air, and then went into the water. Right? Knocked the water. it, and then grabbed it. This is what I. This is what I recall happening. And did you get? Were you very badly splashed? Were you very grumpy about it, or did you all? I was certainly grumpy about it. Do, do uh, yeah. I'll, I'll play you being grumpy. Yeah, yeah really. Oh. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> 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 David's team, what do you think? Claudia. I mean, I'm, I suppose you're sceptical. When you pay for something, you put your wallet back. You don't wander around a menagerie <laughs> holding your wallet like some sort of ice cream cone. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's got to be a lie. And Jason? I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. So you're going to say it's a lie? We're going to say it's a lie. Saying it's a lie. OK, Clive. Uh, <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs>
Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Clive didn't once have his wallet stolen by a walrus. Uh, I once made love to a walrus, uh, Barry White. <laughs> Always gets me in the mood. <laughs> Miranda is up next. Miranda, reveal all. One of my best friends at school was a little man I'd made from a slice of toast that I always kept in my bag. <laughs> OK. Yes, true. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> what was his name? Tim. Tim Toast. In the toast mug. <laughs> How did you make him? Uh, I cut him. I cut, actually cut, I actually With figured scissors. in myself. Scissors I, or, I, I or a knife? Uh, scissors. Scissors, so you've got a piece of toast, brown or white? Good question. Brown. Brown toast, was he buttered? No, he wasn't buttered. <laughs> that Damn. would be stupid, David. <laughs> You make yourself a piece of toast, you butter it unthinkingly before no. you say, oh, no, that was the no, one I was because... going to cut out and make a thing. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I've buttered my friend, no, but I... then my friend will be more buttery, which is <laughs> The fats in the butter would help preserve the friend from the mould, which will otherwise develop, which is going to be the central part of my next question. But How he, long he... did Tim last before he rotted? <laughs> What did you feel when you saw Tim, who you'd I created, rotting? I stopped listening rotting? about ten minutes ago. <laughs> what are you asking me? I'm asking what happened about the rotting of Tim. I don't remember a rotting. How, how old were you when you made Tim? Seven, seven or eight. And how old were you when you stopped being interested in Tim? <laughs> uh, Twenty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> and what did, he, what did he do, Tim? Did you never have an imaginary friend? He was just... This he... wasn't an imaginary friend. <laughs> well, <laughs> that just happens to be made out of a piece of toast. <laughs> Did you make him, you know, in your own image? I do you remember designing big legs because I wanted him to be a fast runner like what I was. Where did Tim sleep? In the Tim. toaster. How <laughs> <laughs> did you take him to bed? <laughs> All right, then, David's team, I think you, you've heard enough. Um, what do you think, Doria? I think it's true. I'd be very happy to make a small piece of toast friend. <laughs> I think true. I, I, I'm, I don't know, so I'm happy to go with true, yes. You're saying it's true. I'm saying it's okay, true. OK, Miranda, is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact... It... Oh! <laughs> It was a lie all along. Uh, one of Miranda's best friends at school was not a little man that she'd made from a slice of toast. Well, it makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> a little man who lives in a woman's handbag is both the plot of a charming children's story and grounds for committal to a psychiatric institution. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. What? could be simpler. Lee, <laughs> take a look at this. Have you ever met Jodie Marsh? Yeah, I met her at a book signing. And that's clever, she wrote her own book. <laughs> what do you want to do in life? Um, I'd like to be, like, just like the next Jodie Marsh and be, like, famous and that. And then when I got too old to do that, I'd like to be a writer cos I like writing. <laughs> I've already started writing my autobiography and I'm dead young, but I can just carry it on. What is your book called? It's called Ups, Downs and Wishes. Why? Because it's got, like, all the ups in my life and all the downs and all my wishes. <laughs> is, the, is the premise of that show that the people interviewed are too boring to be interviewed by humans? <laughs> so they have to use a computer, because otherwise a human interviewing them would die of boredom. <laughs> is she not your type? <laughs> all right, here's the, uh, here's the related fact, then, uh, for Lee's team. David Beckham gave a copy of his own autobiography to Nelson Mandela as a Christmas present. Now, is that true? What would Nelson Mandela do with a colouring book? It's more like to give him a football or a shirt, though, wouldn't he, or something like that, or, or a pair of boots. But he's or... 90. He yeah. could always... Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you do David Beckham? Can you do his voice? I can do that sort of thing, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do it then? Could you do it now? Could you do I'm it doing it. it. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, for Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday in 2008, David Beckham sent this message. Mr Mandela, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do it as Sean Connery. Um, <laughs> do it as Ronnie Corbett or Terry Wogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do Frank Spencer. <laughs> the message went like this. <laughs> Rob, I think you probably safest tell us first who it is, you know, and then we'll know. <laughs> no, no, just, uh, I'm not going to say no. who it is. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say he's a bit of a tit, OK? And then you go with it. Oh. <laughs> Mr Mandela, happy 90th birthday. <laughs> Sorry I can't be with you, but um, I'm sure you'll have an amazing day. <laughs> Lee's team, what's your guess? I think it's, it's not true. I think he gave him something else, but I, I don't know why I say that. I, I reckon that's true. Truth, lie. I'm going to say... <laughs> true. You're saying it's true? <laughs> Gripping, the gripping the desk, man. For goodness sake. <laughs> it's all right. It's a panel game. That's not the desk. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying true. Yes, it is true. Yay! Yay! <laughs> David Beckham did give a copy of his own autobiography to Nelson Mandela as a Christmas present. As if the man hadn't suffered enough. <laughs> not so much a long walk to freedom, more a short walk to the bin. <laughs> So at the end of that round, David's team have two points and Lee's team have two points. Oh, well, Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Owen. <laughs> Miranda Hart, what is Owen to you? This is Owen, and he stopped me attending his yoga classes because I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> right. Uh, Lee. This is Owen. He's a professional juggler, and he's teaching me to juggle. <laughs> yeah. right. And Clive, how do you know Owen? He is uh, my builder, and, in fact, he was working on my roof once and fell through it while I was watching television. My word. Oh. All right. David, where do you want to start? Right, Clive, um, <laughs> what was on TV? What was on TV? I'm afraid to say it was Richard and Judy. Uh, <laughs> and this was really embarrassing. <laughs> it, was it was daytime telly. Owen, I've known for quite a while. He's done a lot of building work for me and he used to make fun of the fact that sometimes I, I was at home uh, and I would say, well, I explain I was working. And sometimes the television would go on, I have to explain, oh, well, I'm watching the television because I'm researching something. So as, as he came through the ceiling, you shouted, there's an item on Inwit Justice coming <laughs> <laughs> And what was he doing on your roof? My roof is a nightmare. So I've had mm. endless time with builders on the roof, including Owen. Uh, first it was his father. And, and he his... fell through. No, no, no. <laughs> but, uh... And his father before him. And his father before him. <laughs> he was pulling up the lead or the zinc that forms the, the valley gutter and was standing on the slates and, unfortunately, uh, that created a hole and his legs came through and then eventually, of course, brought down the whole ceiling eventually. OK. Uh, Lee. Lee. Yes. Um, so you're looking to develop more um, showbiz skills. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> what made you think juggling? My four-year-old son yeah. went to a children's party and uh, said, I, I saw a juggler today. I wish you could juggle, Daddy. <laughs> oh. And I looked into that little boy's eyes and I... <laughs> I said, son... Ah... <laughs> 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 I said, son, if you want to see your old daddy juggling, <laughs> you know. So, how many lessons have you had? <laughs> well, I look over at Rob and I see that he's got balls on his desk. And I would, uh, thank you. <laughs> you want to do that one? Oh. Oh, oh four. Well, what, what, what about the seven clubs? Why did I do that, Rob? <laughs> two lessons. Surely you ought to get Owen to do the juggling. Him? He's a builder. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had two lessons, so I'm just learning the basics at the moment. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I admit it, I'm only throwing two just more in the hand. Are you... <laughs> the, he's not a very good teacher. 
I mean, basically, we've learned absolutely nothing from that because if Lee did know how to juggle it, he would not now be juggling as well as he could. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what about Miranda's claim? Okay. Okay. What's so funny about yoga? A couple uh, joined our class and um, they just got engaged and they wanted to tone pre-wedding and they were very earnest. And that's when it started going wrong because they, they were what made me laugh a lot. What, what was it that they did that was...? Well, the first thing was that when they did positions, they looked into each other's eyes quite earnestly. And I found that very funny. Right. <laughs> and then another, another time, um, oh, we were doing the sun salutations. I don't know if you're aware of mm. yoga. Mm. And no. Owen said, and into downward dog, which is always amusing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman did the biggest fart. <laughs> I would have got myself together, I think, there. But the fiancé, he said very earnestly, and there she blows. <laughs> we know. OK, we need an answer. Uh, oh. So David's team is Owen, Miranda's ex-yoga teacher, Lee's juggling coach, or Clive's tumbling tradesman? I don't believe that Lee no. would just have juggling lessons just so he could look his son in the eye. <laughs> no. I believe, completely believe, about yeah. Clive's roof. Is there That's... many male yoga no. teachers? Is... <laughs> the other one yeah, I'm there are It a seems a little bit of a, like a girl's job. It's like job. the first time you've ever been out of the north. No, it does. <laughs> Is there such thing? It's because it sounds to me like homosexuals. <laughs> You always do this when I'm on the show. You're from the north. <laughs> I thought I was from the north till I met you. <laughs> OK, I do need an answer, chaps. Well, shall we go with Clive, then? I think yeah. so. Yeah. So, you think that it's uh, Clive's Rufa uh, Owen. Would you like to reveal your true identity? I am actually a professional juggler and I've been teaching... Oh! <laughs> Look at these go! Look at these babies! There's the full shower! How about that? There's the big finish! Look at that! What about the, the kids' side of things? The, 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 My the... kid genuinely went to a birthday party and came home and said, uh, I saw a juggler. It was the best thing I've ever seen. I wish you could do juggling, Daddy. Aww. Oh. That's the kind of man I am, girls. <laughs> so if anyone's up for it... Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, when you hear things like that, it just adds to the mystery of why the social services took them away, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, Owen is teaching Lee to juggle. Uh, thank you very much, Owen. <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but, of course, against the clock, starting with... Uh, it's you, David. I was thrown out of a nightclub for refusing to stop dancing on a table. <laughs> there we are. What was the name of the nightclub? It was called Cindy's. Cindy's. <laughs> right. This is taking on a whole new... What sort of... <laughs> David couldn't think of a name but think of your dolls. Um... <laughs> Cindy's. Why were you on the table? What was the occasion? It was just... Uh, there was just a group of us went to this nightclub, uh, you know, on a Saturday night, I think, and got very pissed. When they said, please stop, yeah. what did you say back? What Hammer did... time! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I was sort of, if you can imagine this, in a slightly <laughs> drunken state of self-righteousness. <laughs> and I sort of thought I wasn't doing any harm. What, uh, what kind of music were you into, then? <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever was on. So. What? A quite fast what fox music? Drop. What I mean, music? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this saying... is going at some speed. I'm getting on the table. <laughs> no, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was pop music. When they was play pop like... music? <laughs> <laughs> music is yeah. totally legitimate. It is not in the same category as talking about the hit parade. <laughs> I can say pop music without turning to tweed. <laughs> Lee, it's time to, to reach a decision here. Miranda, what is our decision? Well, I've seen David drunk many times, but I've never seen him 
dance before. So you're thinking it's a lie? I think yeah. it's a lie. It so I, has to be a lie. It's got to be a lie. I, I thought it was a lie when he said, once in a nightclub, I, yes, I, my shutters yeah. went down. <laughs> you're saying it's a lie. Uh, David, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Yes. <laughs> 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 Next, mm. it's uh, Jason. Oh, all right. I I once put out a fire using my neighbour's milk. <laughs> Are we his team? Is that possible? <laughs> was it a Was it a very small fire? Um, it was. It was. You know, a fire. <laughs> say, say for example, that desk was on fire. It'd be about, it was about that big, and it wasn't just one neighbour's. It was. It was about fifteen neighbours. Fifteen neighbours. What? Yeah. What time of day was this? In the morning when the milk came. <laughs> well, one of your neighbours were up early enough to bring the milk. It was a Saturday. <laughs> it was a Saturday. Because <laughs> it's a Saturday. They have a lie in and you get double milk because of the Sunday. You know. So what was on fire, please? Just on the, like a, on like a field. There was like some dried grass. Just and... a bonfire then. <laughs> well, it, no, it just sort of. We just thought, oh look at that dried grass. Let's set it on fire. And, you know, that's what you do when what? you're 25. And you... and, uh, <laughs> I think we're about eight or nine. But basically, you're an arsonist. You started the fire... Yes. ..and then stole some milk in order to put it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it could have just burnt out quite happily on its own. There was no need, really, to pour... Yeah, but at eight... I mean, eight. I've not got this knowledge of fire. I'd seen three episodes of London's Burning. I don't know why... <laughs> I'm not sure that adds up, Jason. <laughs> How long's London Burning been on? I think you can believe him, he's seen London's Burning. <laughs> I'm not sure London's Burning, the programme, was on. So you're disputing when London's Burning first came onto our screen? Yes, yes, <laughs> I yes. Right, Jason was born in 1981, so he is alleging that by 1989, London's Burning was already on television. Oh, I believe 1981. him. 1981! <laughs> 1981, he looks like me uncle! <laughs> Anyway, can we get back to the story yeah, that we yes, just heard? Yes, yes. How far did you have to go to get the milk? I was a kid, I, I didn't measure it. I, I mean, mean, about... Well, give us a rough... Tw twelve and a half metres. About I'm twelve just... and a half metres. <laughs> twelve and a half metres. Right. Why don't you just get a knock at the door and say, quick, quick, the, the field's on fire? Because then that would be admitting... Yeah. ..that there was a fire, whereas in this instant, the only thing that happened was a milkman got sacked for not delivering you... milk. I think... <laughs> In other words, just to clarify, before we say our decision, you, te you took how many bottles of milk to, to put out the fire? Um, f 15 or something. Ah, 15. 15 10, well, I take you back to your earlier answer, which was 15 houses, and on a Saturday they got double milk. He's <laughs> <laughs> very fair minded, he took one pint from each <laughs> So, what are you going to say, Lee? What, what, what are you going for here? Oh, the, the, I don't the, know now. The whole answer was delivered in such an implausible and frankly guilty sounding <laughs> way. Yeah. What do you think, Miranda? Uh, I think it's a truth. Well, Jason, where were, you, where were you brought up? Manchester. Yeah, you see, I was brought up around Manchester. And I can imagine the bit about you saying, all right, let's go in there and set fire to a field. Believable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bit where you go, oh no, that's a bit big. Better put it out with some milk and be good citizens. Yeah. Doesn't really sort of add up. So, what are you going to plump for? You're saying the truth. Truth. You're saying a lie. Yeah. I'll go with I'll go with Miranda and say yeah. we think that's the truth. You're saying it's the truth. OK, like so, uh, Jason, is it, it the truth? It is a truth. Wow. Oh. 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 <laughs> Next. <laughs> Claudia Winkleman. Hey! Oh. Possession. Ah, now, there's a box just behind the stage there, Claudia, if you'd like to get the box. Hold on, bear with me. Uh, take out its contents. OK. In here is my pet cat from when I was little, and my dad had her stuffed for me when she died. Oh! Here she is. Oh! <laughs> Can I just pop her on the desk there, Claudia? <laughs> was she run over? <laughs> Did you want your father to stuff your cat? No, but I was died? so devastated, I was so upset that she died. So my dad, as a present, uh, gave it to me, uh, all stuffed, and she came to my wedding. Sorry, sorry, came to your wedding? <laughs> I think, I think Lee, not of her own accord. <laughs> so, was she a bridesmaid and came down on a trolley? No, no. You... <laughs> Claudia, sorry, can you just remind us again how, the, how your poor little cat died? Yes, well, she got sick. <laughs> <laughs> and were you pleased with this dead Let's cat? Just cat. I was very pleased because she's sort of lucky. Like if you're anyone's She's near lucky. Her... <laughs> 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 I would hate to see what happens.
Welcome to the Young Lucky One. What are we saying? I want, this, I want this to be true because it'll be funny. Want... It'll be funny if it's true. I just, I just don't believe Claudia, even in Claudia's world, which I, <laughs> which I love. However, this is a step too far. I just yeah. don't believe. Yeah. Well, that's... Yeah. that's pretty convincing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what the hell? She looks like a very lovely but slightly unstable woman, and I'm going to say that that's true. You're saying it's true. Okay, Claudia Winkleman, is it true or is it a lie? It is indeed. A lie. Oh, oh, what a shame. <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, it's not Claudia's pet cat that was stuffed when it died. Um, I considered having my own cat stuffed, but uh, I prefer to remember him peacefully attached to the grill of that Hyundai as it sped away. <laughs> That's what he would have wanted. And that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that uh, David's team have three points, but Lee's team have romped to victory with seven. <laughs> of course, it's not just a team game. And um, my individual liar of the week is Claudia Winkleman. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it goes to show uh, being as mad as a bag full of chimps had to come in handy sooner or later. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> to you, Carol Borderman, Janet Streetwater, Omid Jalili, Russell Howard, Ken Livingston, Clive Anderson, Miranda Hart, Reginald D. Hunter, Terry Christian, and their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing on tonight, Jamelia, Stephen Mangan, Claudia Winkleman, Marcus Brickster, Fern Britton, Davina McCall, Joe Brand, and their team captain, David Mitchell, and your host, Rob Diamond! Good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that rewards the ability to deceive. Mark Twain said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. Well, Twain, I just write down my lies and keep them in a file. <laughs> then colour code them so I can see who I told the lies to. <laughs> then I have them cross-referenced with another file in case I meet someone else who might have heard the lie. <laughs> And I have the files maintained by a full-time secretary in my lie library who's on call 24 hours in case I need a spreadsheet of the lies to be emailed over. <laughs> and so, to round one, home truths. <laughs> Carol, you're first up. Please reveal all. On Countdown, if I worked out the number puzzle before the time was up, <laughs> I used to play a little game. That's where I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> so, David's team, what do you think? What, what, what little game? Um, well, on the numbers puzzle, you know, you used to do this and press the target yeah. and the number and the target. And then there's a time up. limit. And then there'd be 30, so you had 30 seconds to do something. Yeah. Well, most of the time, I'd get the answer before the clock started, so I had 30 <laughs> seconds. Before the clock started? Yeah. <laughs> what I used to do, I used to get my pen that I would write on the board with, and I used to go round all the props boys, and I used to make them tap the end of my pen, and how many could tap the end of my pen in 30 seconds was the game. <laughs> so, how many props guys, props guys, were required in the production of Countdown? <laughs> 
Joe's been on Countdown a lot, so you know how it, we have uh, someone like Harry or Vince or Stan who do the water Carol, pouring. Carol, 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 and Carol, then Carol, Carol, we had. Oh, yeah, had. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably sat there. <laughs> Was this not distracting to the poor contestants who are trying to do some maths if out of shot? Uh, slightly out of shot, yes. Yeah. yes. I feel sorry for this, uh, this new girl that's doing the, doing the numbers, cos all the props guy must be going, oh, you'll have great fun on this show. <laughs> they would have said to her on the first day, are we going to play Touch the Pen? <laughs> and got fired for sexual harassment. <laughs> We always played Touch the Pen with Carol. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm just not like that. <laughs> David, what are you and your teammates thinking? Well, what I doubt is whether you would be allowed, when the contestants are trying to work out the math, to run around the studio getting men to touch your marker pen. <laughs> so we think it's a lie, I think. I think we, we do, okay. yeah. What a surprise. OK, Carol, is it truth or is it a lie? It is... <laughs> true. <laughs> Now then. Oh. <laughs> and do you know what? It actually is lots of fun. <laughs> so you seriously did this? Do you know when I was being really cheeky, I'd take the top off and then they all got dirty fingers? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just like to behave outside of society's rules, don't you? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to find out you're an enthusiastic dogger. <laughs> the D in my name stands for delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, why? Well, it was the late 60s when I was born, 1969. And uh, black men my age around that time being given names like Reginald and Winston and Delicious because... <laughs> <laughs> because uh, at that time in America, the affirmative action had just started. So black women saw an opportunity for their children to get more jobs. So what they did was we'll give him a name that will enable him to be, you know, recognizable yet dignified to potential employers. And... <laughs> Delicious is dignified. Well, I mean, you have to understand how... Th it's, little, it's a little different in the black community than it is in your white world. And, <laughs> like, the name Delicious commands great respect in the, in the ghetto. Uh, <laughs> you, uh... You probably don't listen to much rap music, do you, mm, Fern? Mm, mm. Uh, there's, uh, MC Delicious. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Um, Big Papa Delicious. French Golden. <laughs> <laughs> and where did, where did Reginald come from? Uh, Reginald is a German name. It means mighty or wise power. And um, delicious means uh, very tasty. <laughs> name? My father's name is Homer. <laughs> and what was his middle bit? He didn't have a middle name. No. Um, uh, he grew up in the 30s and 40s, and it was very tough times for black people, and he couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have brothers and sisters? I do, indeed. And what are their names? Um, well, there's, there's Brenda, there's Kathy, there's Oliver, um, there's Scrumptious. Um, <laughs> I don't think people would have thought that calling you delicious would help you get jobs. <laughs> except, except as a food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, shall we say it's a lie? I yeah. think that's what we're... Yeah. You're going to feel stupid when it's true. That. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. OK, Reg, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. <laughs> I won a junior one-man-and-his-dog event when I was 14. <laughs> As the shepherd or the dog? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you grow up in the countryside? Nope. So how come you got so good at, you know, <laughs> manoeuvring sheep and sheepdogs? Oh, is that what it is? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
thought, because this was like one man in his dog, I, well, I was just, I was going to ask you, like, how what did, did you they think judge it was? You? Tell us what you what thought do you think it was? was. I thought it was one man and his dog, just being judged. <laughs> I did, I, sorry, I didn't know. What, what is no, what it? it? What is it? Sheep herding. Y yeah, the, using a dog to come by, to, come by, all of that. that. All that. <laughs> you've, you've gone from novice to expert. Yeah. <laughs> you had to take it over hurdles through like different, you know, like round and run. You had to look after it. it had to be well washed and everything. <laughs> That's dog agility, mate. <laughs> That's not. Yeah, well, it's not. Yeah. I just picked you in crufts then. How come I haven't worn? He's well washed. No, I mean it. <laughs> I can't do more than wash it, can I? <laughs> so there were no sheep involved in this interpretation of the one man and his dog contest that you were involved in? <laughs> no. Sounds like no you prosecuted sheep. a Welshman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob, I no disrespect. <laughs> Was it inside or outside? Well, it was outside, funny enough. I, I, I don't know, I've never been to one. Did you say it like inside? I should know? Yeah. You've never been to one, but you come by, come by, come by, come by. <laughs> Were you very keen on dog grooming? No. <laughs> you weren't? On the internet. <laughs> so you... <laughs> Me? Yeah, I'm a three-year-old puppy as well. <laughs> no, I wasn't keen on dog grooming. Well, how did you end up in this competition where you might have to make a dog do weird things if you weren't keen on looking Be after Because I dog. was involved in a youth club. Mm. Ah, right, what was the was youth club? Was it one of them, like, you know, for not young offenders, but kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a lie. I think it's an absolute lie. He, he didn't train the dog. He, there was yeah. no sheep. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I, I also think this is a lie. Well, I think we're, we're unanimous. Oh, you're <laughs> saying that it's a lie. Terry Christian, were you telling us the <laughs> truth there or were you telling us a lie? Well, sorry, lads. Oh, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Of course it was a lie. The last time someone found a sheep in Manchester's city centre, the locals thought they'd captured a cloud. <laughs> now, for David's team, take a look at this. Right, somebody's phoned up. Yeah. Somebody called Dave, asking mm. if we've got any sales jobs going. Get him in. OK. Sometimes an individual can make the difference. Look at Julius Caesar. Hannibal, not Lecter, but Hannibal, the commander. He made a difference, didn't he? Defeated the Romans, and he was an individual. Well, this bloke could be the same, and we've got to get him here to listen to him, see what he's got to say. See? Okay. You tell him it's an introductory interview. Okay, we want to find out a bit about well, you. We want to find out what him. kind of personality you are, Who's what makes you that? tick. Yeah, I'll phone him now. Hello, is that Dave? Um, oh, sorry, someone's given me your number, but I think it's the wrong one, mate. Well, I'm so sorry about that. Let's see if he wants a sales job. No, he don't sound right. <laughs> the Armstrongs there, showing the kind of decision-making that can make the difference between failure and abject failure. <laughs> well, here's the related fact for David's team. When interviewing office staff, Simon Cowell asks every candidate to give him ten uses for a kettle. Oh. The idea came to him after a Harvard professor, that's the University in America, Lee, told him... <laughs> ..told him about the type of questions they ask applicants during the university admissions process. Mm. And he decided to ignore those and just to ask about <laughs> a kettle. No, this is one of the ones. This is Apparently this is one of the ones, cos it makes you think on your feet. Well, there's almost nothing that, that you can't believe he'd say in order to try and seem in some way different or interesting. Um, <laughs> he depresses the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> that failed audition for The X Factor still, still rankles, doesn't still it? Still rankles, yeah. <laughs> apparently this is how Danny Minogue got her job, isn't it? Cos she really impressed him with an unusual use, cos she uses the kettle to melt down a face and remould it every minute. <laughs> So, David's team? I think it's a lie. Lie? I, I, you've swayed me, it's a lie. We'll go with lie. David's team are saying it's a lie, I can tell you that it is actually a lie. Yeah. <laughs>
Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. <laughs> they offered Mick Jagger, and it seems too good an opportunity to waste. Mick Jagger. They offered. Uh, <laughs> good. They, uh, it's not up there with the Ronnie Corbett. I'm not going to say for a second that it is, but it was worth an airing. But what would Ronnie Corbett sound like if he was singing a Mick Jagger song? Yeah, good <laughs> idea. Good <laughs> idea. Go on. Go on. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> um, in Australia... <laughs> it was in Australia... <laughs> Don't try and look like you weren't pleased to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to uh, make a decision. So, we're going to go with true. You're saying it's true. Mm. All right. Uh, well, let me tell you this. It is true. <laughs> Please welcome this week's special guest, Sadie. <laughs> Hello. So, Lee, what is Sadie to you? This is Sadie. She's my children's nanny, and the first time I met her, I ran over her foot. <laughs> okay, Omid. Um, this is Sadie, and I employ her to massage my dog. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, Janet. Sadie came to my 60th birthday party, pretended to be a waitress so she could lick Daniel Craig's plate. <laughs> so, there we have it. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? Can I just check? Do yeah. you know Lee? Uh, have you been to his I, house? I, I, I can just about remember his name. <laughs> Okay. I, because okay. if I knew Lee's nanny, I'd either have gone, that's Lee's nanny. <laughs> Can I just point out? Lee's nanny. She's so my, no. yeah, yeah, hang on, hang on. She's my children's offer. nanny. I'm not a complete moron. <laughs> She's not my nanny. <laughs> now, this is running over the foot business. Yeah. Uh, that was the first time you met her. Correct. Uh, and the circumstances were? Uh, I was in the car. <laughs> 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 and she was on the driveway. Correct. What happened immediately after the foot running over moment? Oh! Can you roll that forward? Oh! That was my foot! <laughs> well, you see, she's laughing quite a lot now, as if, like, I have to laugh, he's my employer. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't as it were how you met her. You didn't run over her foot and say, you look like you might be a good nanny. <laughs> The first time she'd arrived at the house, I hadn't met... I'd never met her before, because so, so my wife... Your wife had interviewed her and... Yeah, and I can finish my own sentences. Yeah, yeah. I'm really good at it. <laughs> um, my, my wife had, uh, had, had interviewed, actually. You're correct, yes. <laughs> Tommy, why do you have to get your dog massaged? Uh, that... First of all, I, it's, it's my kid's dog. We've had the dog for about seven years. Uh, th they wanted to get a masseuse because of uh, arthritis. It's a spaniel. We've had it for seven years, so in dog years it's about 42, so it's quite early, and I didn't want to pay for a masseuse, but it Couldn't somebody killed the else dog. learn to massage instead? It's a very it's, quite it's a highly skilled thing. It is. Uh, it's about £35 a session. And how long are you going to have to do it until the dog dies? Uh, I don't, we don't know. It may, it may be indefinite. You know you can have a dog put down for 30. <laughs> Sadie came round to your house, she pretended that she was a waitress, she wanted to lick Daniel Cla Craig's plate and you didn't just chuck her out and go, you are completely weird, you're leaving. No, I don't care. Well, she, she was, was not... There was a lot of people at the party and Sadie yeah. was at the party, I Daniel Craig was at the party. Yeah, a... Sorry, so Sadie was, a, was invited to the party? Yes. The waitress act was in order to gain access to the plate? Yes. I'd, so what I she did is instead of approaching... I through the uh, ins and outs okay. of it. I was Why being. Not? I was, because it was my bloody birthday. I was getting trashed. I was having a good time, like anyone ill tonight would do. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're 60, love, doesn't mean you can't, you know, get off your trolley. The question <laughs> is, why do you think? that Sadie, instead of using her position as a party guest to talk to Daniel Craig, which is legitimate in a party, I think you'll right. agree... Go on, have him, have really him. getting on my wit <laughs> now. <laughs> do you want some? No. Have you met anyone famous in your career? <laughs> really famous? <laughs> like Daniel Craig. <laughs> if you met Daniel Craig, could you actually speak? No. There you go. She's right. <laughs> Are you going 
going to walk over and stand there in answer to every question from here on in? <laughs> we're, all, we're all a bit scared now. Yeah. No, it... hey, I'm most scared cos I'm closest. <laughs> all right, we need an answer. Need an answer. So, uh, so David's team is Sadie, a nanny whose foot Lee ran over, Omid's dog masseuse, no. or a plate-licking pretend waitress at Janet's party. <laughs> Janet absolutely did, couldn't look at Sadie when she walked in, and I thought maybe that was because she really had licked it embarrassingly. It's just Janet an odd thing. Quick. I mean, I'm leaning... Uh, I think it's Omid or Janet, and I'm leaning towards Janet on this one. Right, I'm okay. going Janet. OK, well, let's go Janet. You're saying Janet. OK. Uh, Sadie, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yes, I pose at a waitress. Yes, I clear <laughs> Daniel Craig's face away. And yes, I lick it clean. As a child, at my grandparents' house, I had a little bell that I would ring if I wanted anything. <laughs> Only at the grandparents' house? Yes. Not at home? Because no, your parents didn't no. play that shit. Yeah. <laughs> at, ho at home, you just sort of went... Um... <laughs> so what years are we talking about here? How old are we? About six. What were the things you wanted when you rang the bell? More chips. <laughs> uh, a glass of orange squash. Sense of purpose in life. <laughs> Are you asking us to believe you had orange squash rather than servants pressing and um, fresh orange juice for you? <laughs> in, in many ways, the level of my poshness has been exaggerated. <laughs> what Welcome I am, to my world, Sonny. What, what, the, what the level of your poshness has been exaggerated. <laughs> so, please, team, what, what do you think? We'll say that that's true. You're saying it's true. David, is it true or is it a lie? Well, it is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. As a child, David's grandparents' house did have a little bell that he would ring if he wanted anything. Ding-a-ling! Uh, could I have a posher upbringing, please? <laughs> if you give me any date before the year 2000, I can instantly tell you what day of the week it was. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> the... Is this something you learn, or is this a kind of, you know, Rain Man type thing? No, no, I had to... That's, well, I had to learn... You learned how to do it? Learned the system. What's, what's, what's the, the system? system? The system is, uh, what you do is you actually just learn... <laughs> when... <laughs> Wait! You learn one... You, you learn... sat there trying to think of a system, <laughs> and what you're planning for is you, you actually just learn what day of the week every day is. I can't go back to, like... 14 BC, right? <laughs> right? But I can I can do it right the way back to the sort of 1920s, 1930s. And what you do is you learn a midway, so you learn the 19, you learn one particular pit point in 1955, three months in 1955, you learn it off by heart those 90 days. And then there's a calculation that you can do to plus or minus. What's that calculation? Take a day, one of your, you know, your expert period, the, My... around Suez or whenever it yes. was. Well, you have to give me the exact year, otherwise it'll be too well, different. Okay, answers. I, I don't mind. Right, the 14th of May, 1955. Well, hang on, 14th of May, 1955. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Right. <laughs> and so, how do you extrapolate from your knowledge of that to go back to the 1920s to the 23rd of June, 1927? It's dead simple. Yep. It's seven. Hang on. To the power of two. <laughs> right. Then you take away 10% unless right. it's a leap year. And is it a leap year, 1955? Uh, of course not, you idiot. That was 54. And no, of course. Okay. This one here, that is 55 a leap year. <laughs> Seven to the power of two. <laughs> seven to the power of two is 49. Minus, minus 10%. 10 is 4.9, so you've got 44.1. Correct. I was going to say that's, that's, that's not a day of the week. That's I haven't 40. done it yet. <laughs> it is. 44.1. Then you, you say round it Thursday. up or round it down, which is 44. Key of the door, 21. Two and one is three. Sunday's the first day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> oh, so, David. Lie. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie? OK, Lee, are you telling a lie? Of course I'm telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I have told my children that every time they lie, a puppy dies somewhere. <laughs> Use this line on the children. Has it actually stopped them from lying? Well, it certainly seems to have done. Yeah. Because they do care about puppies. Yes. <laughs> it's a bit of a relief, actually, that you're saying that didn't result in your children telling loads and loads of lies and getting excited by the prospect of puppy death. <laughs> it's heartening on that level. No, but... I don't have sadistic children. <laughs> But it's also bad advice, cos what if a dog goes to attack them and they tell a lie and the dog still gets them? <laughs> Actually... That's the nearest. <laughs> <laughs> the nearest, <laughs> this one, nearest <laughs> dog will die. So you just... <laughs> you know. well, statistically, you'd hope, yeah. by osmosis, the lie yeah. will dog, kill... Essentially, you tell the lie, yeah. dog death spreads out from yeah. you till it finds a dog, <laughs> the dog dies, and then the wave of dog death stops. Can I just ask Joe, why a puppy and not a kitten? She's not sick. <laughs> It was a difficult decision to make. It was a toss-up between a kitten, a puppy, and their dad. And <laughs> kind of puppies are the sweetest. What is your verdict? My team say true. You're saying true, yeah? yeah. OK, so, Joe, is it true? It's... a lie. Oh. It's a lie. Ah, now, there's a box just behind the stage there, Claudia, if you'd like to get the box. Hold on, bear with me. Uh, take out its contents. OK. In here oh. is my pet cat from when I was little, and my dad had her stuff for me when she died. Oh! <laughs> here she is. Oh! Can I just pop her on the desk there, <laughs> Claudia? <laughs> What's she run over? <laughs> This is coffee. 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 And um, she was my most loved, loved pet, and she died when I was 14. I could even get upset about it now. Yeah. And... How did I... you... Go on, then. <laughs> you can get That's upset. It. Did you... But did you want to exploit her on a light entertainment panel <laughs> show? <laughs> did you want your father to stuff your cat? No, but I was died? so devastated. I was so upset that she died. My dad, as a present, uh, gave her to me, uh, all stuffed, and she came to my wedding. Sorry, sorry. Came to your wedding? <laughs> I think, I think Lee, not of her own accord. <laughs> Was she a bridesmaid and came down on a trolley? No, down no, the I just don't believe Claudia, even in Claudia's world, which I, which I love. I love your world. Mm. However, this is a step too far. I just yeah. don't believe. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's pretty convincing. That's... Yeah. <laughs> It's talking to her now. Time now for Lee to make a decision. She looks like a very lovely but slightly unstable woman, and I'm going to say that that's true. You're saying it's true? OK, Claudia Winkleman, is it true or is it a lie? It is indeed a lie. Oh, oh what a shame. <laughs> it's a lie. I have made a CD of the sound of my kettle boiling and I play it every night to help me get to sleep. Lee's team, is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> why, why would that help you get to sleep? It reminds me of my grandmother because we were always caravanning when, she was, when I was little and she'd be up all later than me and the kettle would be just boiling on the gas stove and I could hear that little hiss and whistle in the bubbles. I had it done for me by the sound people at work. Mm. You really? absolute like You're trying to tell us. <laughs> All I'm picturing is a man now with his big things on, going like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. In five, four... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how You're lying in bed with your husband trying to get to sleep yes. and you put the sound of a kettle <laughs> boiling. <laughs> And he's all right with that, is he? I go to bed earlier than he does because I have to get up at five. Right. For so... work. To switch the kettle off. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried sex and plus, to get to sleep? When, when... Have, I... have you tried sex to get to sleep? Yeah, because Ken's got a good he... technique if you want to try it. <laughs> What do your kids say about this CD? They think oh, it's weird? No, they're, they're 
put up with it. You no, know? you're lying now. Kids think <laughs> everything is weird. No. <laughs> Tired, I'll go upstairs and they will already have put a hot water bottle in the bed and the tape, the CD on the thingy. Oh, goodness, you're just off the scale. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, what are you going to say? I'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, Fern, reveal all. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is a lie. If Fern can't get to sleep, she just rings Philip Schofield and asks him to tell her about his time in Joseph. <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, and that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show. And my individual liar of the week this week is Fern Britton. <laughs> yes. Fern Britton, whose gigantic whoppers were as beautifully showcased tonight as they were on her 2003 Pilates video. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where fibbing is the order of the day. Uh, when they're lying, people fidget awkwardly, they shuffle their feet and they avoid eye contact. I know this is a fact because the other day I did a stand-up gig to an audience of 2,000 liars. <laughs> <laughs> We lie the most on the telephone because there's no written record. Uh, Lee lies on the phone all the time. Uh, there's never really a fire, is there, Lee? <laughs> And scientists believe we evolved the ability to lie simply because it helps us to get food and sex. I didn't have to lie to get food. <laughs> and so to round one, Home Truths is all about the extraordinary, exciting lives of our panellists. Each panellist will turn over a card containing either a true fact about themselves or a whopping lie that they've never seen before. Can the opposing team separate the truth from the fibs? First up, Reg. The D in my name stands for delicious. <laughs> Obviously, why? Well, it was the late 60s when I was born, 1969. There are a lot of uh, black men my age around that time being given names like Reginald and Winston and delicious because... <laughs> Because uh, at that time in America, affirmative action had just started. So black women saw an opportunity for their children to get more jobs. So what they did was we give him a name that will enable him to be, you know, recognizable yet dignified to potential employers. And, and delicious is dignified. Well, I mean, you have to understand how th it's, little, it's a little different in the black community than it is in your white world. And, <laughs> and so... Um, like, the name Delicious commands great respect in the, in the ghetto. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you, you probably don't listen to much rap music, do you, Fern? Uh, and, uh, there's, uh, 
MC Delicious. Um, <laughs> um, Big Papa Delicious. French Golden. <laughs> Where did Reginald come from? Uh, Reginald is a German name. It means mighty or wise power. And um, uh, delicious means uh, very tasty. <laughs> Name. My father's name is Homer. <laughs> what was his middle bit? He didn't have a middle name. No. Um, uh, he grew up in the 30s and 40s, and it was very tough times for black people, and he couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> and do you have brothers and sisters? I do indeed. And what are their names? Um, well, there's, there's Brenda, there's Kathy, there's Oliver, um, there's Scrumptious. Um, <laughs> I don't think people would have thought that calling you delicious would help you get jobs, <laughs> except, except as a food. <laughs> well, I think, uh, shall we say it's a lie? I yeah. think that's what we're yeah. going to feel towards. stupid when it's true. That. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. OK, Reg, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. <laughs> So what does the D stand for in your name? What does the D stand for in my name? None of your business. <laughs> the D in Reg's name does not stand for delicious. I did once meet a person called Delicious, but uh, not sure it was her real name, uh, or if the other girl was really her sister, or if either of them were actually qualified nurses. <laughs> but uh, I will say, if you are watching Delicious, uh, could I please have my wallet back? <laughs> Stephen Mangan, you're up next. Yeah, I once guessed the exact number of sweets in a Mini Cooper and was awarded a prize by Britain's tallest man. <laughs> How many sweets were in that, that car? Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember, actually. Oh, when was this? I would have been about 11. Can you give us a ballpark figure? It was something in the sort of 4,000 area, cos they were quite... <laughs> they were Four... quite big. I don't think they were... 4,000 sweets in a Mini Cooper? I don't think they were How real big... sweets. They were probably, like, fake big sweets. Right. <laughs> what sweet were what they? What tipped you no off idea. to make you think that they was fake? <laughs> they just looked too big for a mouth. <laughs> if they're that big... You said about that big? Quite big, yeah. But I don't know. Far about, yeah. So they had massive fake sweets in a mi mini Cooper. Yeah. I'm very suspicious of your story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can't remember the amount. You can't remember the size. <laughs> and uh, where was this? Any recollection of the country? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a Brent Cross shopping centre, and I I won a hundred pounds. What? That That's was the cool. prize. Hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. What year was this? Oh, 80, late 80, 80, 83, something around there. Late 80s and 83. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I, I, one bit of advice, don't ever try and make it in politics. You haven't got a chance. <laughs> and he knows. <laughs> I, I sense you're edging ever closer to a, a decision. What are we going to say, Ken? He's lying. Not that tough, then. Uh, Reginald? <clears throat> My first instinct to say that that's too fantastic of a story to have ever happened to anybody. <laughs> but then I think, you look like you might do anything. <laughs> to go with Reginald with his suave charm or you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Ken here and say that you are in fact not telling the truth. You're saying it's a lie. Okay. So, Steve Mangan, truth or fiction? It is in fact the truth. No! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, uh, it's actually true. Uh, Stephen did guess the exact number of sweets in a Mini Cooper and was awarded a prize by Britain's tallest man. <laughs> I'm so glad that that story ended happily, considering it had the words car, sweeties and strange man in it. <laughs> uh, Ken, your turn to reveal all. I am the Mayor of London. <laughs> I was the first person in the world to breed the Congolese frog, Hymenochiris curtipes, in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> this, this shouldn't take long. <laughs> David, why? They are the only frog I know that has a prehensile anus. <laughs> and... <laughs> what? You've got an easy yeah. You've got they, they can turn the anus into a small tube which sprays eggs and or sperm in just about every general direction. How did you make them breed? Well, this was <laughs> He stammered when he asked it. I love that. <laughs> uh, sir, how did you um <laughs> make, make them breed? <laughs> Everybody else had kept them in tanks with an aerator which bubbled away. And with the prehensile anus spraying the sperm and the eggs in all directions, <laughs> I, if it's bubbly water, they just sink down and nothing happens. They need to stay on the surface film. So it's pure luck on oh, my Oh, because... Part. Of... Not in my wildest yeah. dreams did I ever think I'd hear Ken Livingston say anus so many times. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been around on election night. <laughs> Uh, OK, David, uh, what you, is your so you think it's I, I, I think he's a, it's a very clever lie, cos we know how you like amphibians or reptiles or whatever. What is it? What's Politicians. The Politicians. <laughs> <laughs> you have to reach a decision. Has he what had do you a lie think? yet, or is, is it, it true? Is it true or false? I think it's false. She thinks it's a lie, you see. Right. You can't ask members I, of the audience. Of course you yeah. can. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. What is this? Okay, hands up. Who yeah. thinks it's a lie? Hands up. <laughs> and yeah, oh and who thinks it's true? What's this? Think it's, true. What's this? Yeah. it's unheard of on this show. What I, what I like, Fern, is we now have a sort of a soup song of ready, steady, cook about it. <laughs> so what are you going to say then? I think green tomatoes have got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're saying it's... I think, uh, the, well, it was more hands up for true. It was true. I think. I'll I think go with it's true. You're saying it's true. Right. Ken Livingstone, is it the truth or is it a lie? It's true. <laughs> yes, it's uh, completely true. Ken was the first person in the world to breed the Congolese frog Hymen Ocarus Curtipes. <laughs> Have to say, Ken, perhaps if you'd concentrated a bit harder on your transport policy instead of Kermit, you'd still be in power. <laughs> our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some celebrity facts and all our teams have to do is decide if they're true or not. What could be simpler? David's team, take a look at this clip of someone that we can all look up to. Now, years ago, a brill creamed head looking like patent leather was just the thing for the trendy young man. 1955, Saturday night, off to Tottenham Royal. So it was crash bash, sausage and mash, two kips and a bomb bomb, little dab of do you. Really so on the barnet. And then the combination was old spice on the German, a little bit of old spice, tiddly winky woo, with the ball cream, bees knees. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I wouldn't mind giving him a punchy lunch in the boat race. <laughs> so here's the related fact, then, for, for David's team. The Archbishop of Canterbury once endorsed a Cockney version <laughs> of the Bible. Is this possible, David's team? Why would you need a Cockney version of the Bible? It was to make yeah. the Bible more accessible to the man on the street. So... Some blush tomato, stigmata. <laughs> George Carey endorsed it in 2001. The feeding of the 5,000 becomes Jesus feeding 5,000 geezers from five loaves of Uncle Ned and two Lillian Gish. 
Jesus heals a deaf and dumb man is translated as Jesus heals a mutton Jeff geezer who couldn't rab it either. <laughs> oh, please let this be true. Yeah. Again, it'd be great if that was true. Wouldn't it be? Bro I'd buy it. Um, I'd I buy one of those. I think we'd have heard about it, though. You, you would, wouldn't you? Chas and Dave would have done a CD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is that clever? The rhyming stuff. Why is that good? You're using language to make it unclear. Say what you well, say. What you do mean? Do you think it was to stop the police knowing what you were talking about? Well, people shouldn't stop the police knowing what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? Yeah. I'd like to believe it, but I think it's a lie. I, it has to be a lie, doesn't it? Okay, we'll say lie. You're saying lie. It is true. <laughs> Yes, uh, amazingly, it's true, and um, I have the book here. <laughs> Without Adam and Eve, it's... No, sir. <laughs> let, me, let me read a bit to you, the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> I, I'm going to hate this, aren't I? Yes, <laughs> you are. Okay. You are. Okay, I'll just I'll brace myself. Hello, Dad. Oh, God. <laughs> no, 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 Dad. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Dad, up there in good old heaven. Your name is well, great and holy, and we respect you, Gov. <laughs> we hope we can all have a butcher's at heaven and be there as soon as possible, and we want to make you happy, Gov. <laughs> it is true. Uh, when the book came out, it was a massive hit, which is also Cockney rhyming slang. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, it's David with three points and Lee with two points. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists, or, more embarrassingly, is someone from the Child Support Agency looking for Lee. <laughs> this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome uh, this week's special guest, Gordon. <laughs> so, Stephen, what is Gordon to you? Uh, well, this is Gordon. Uh, Gordon and I were in a prog rock band called Aragon, and we recorded an album called The Wizard's Dream. Uh, David, perhaps you'd like to explain your connection. Uh, yes, this, this is Gordon. Um, he works in my local pet shop and recently sold me a hamster that <laughs> died the very next day. <laughs> Finally, Fern, explain your relationship with Gordon. This is Gordon. He's the subject of my life drawing class, and I have painted him naked three times. There we are, then. Pretty straightforward. A, uh, a former prog rocker, a purveyor of poorly pets, or a nude model? Lee's team, where would you like to start? What, okay. what did the hamster die of? So, uh, what did the hamster die of? I, I, I don't really know, actually. I think, it I was... think we all know, David. <laughs> You didn't take it back and ask your money back or ask an explanation about why it died? You just brought the man who sold you the dead hamster on the show. <laughs> That's justice. Who, who, who was the hamster for? It was for the godson of some friends of mine. No, no, uh, rather my godson, who is the son of some friends of mine. <laughs> can I, was can for, I ask, are you close? It was for God's son. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> for his birthday, I bought him a hamster. And he came down the next morning. <laughs> and the hamster was no longer alive. <laughs> he... Yeah. OK. Stephen. Hello. Could you remind us again of the name of the band? Aragon. OK. And what was the album? The Wizard's Dream. Can you name some of the songs on the album? Yep. In fact, I've changed the question. Name them all without stopping <laughs> the breath. There was The Dragon, which was 15 minutes long. <laughs> Uh, reflections of the Reaper. <laughs> Fool by the Fire. But there were four songs, that's three. Four songs on an album? Yeah, well, one was 15 minutes long. Which year was this? This was the early 90s, 1986. <laughs> <laughs> How many members of the 
members of the band were there? <coughs> there were four at that point. Can you, name, with... could you name the other members? Yes. Do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going. Charlie Dilks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Charlie. <laughs> and Angus Ford Robertson. And Fern. Now, you took you take sketches of this man here. So what you uh built up from fruit to flowers to his testicles or <laughs> we started on a ladder and a bit of fabric and a paint brushes and things and then we moved on to eventually Gordon and he was there for three three sessions. Okay, now let me ask you this. Um we, we, when did you do this course? Two years ago I started and I still do them. You still do them? Now you get up and rush off to the studio, you got four kids and you have whatever extra things you do and then you have time to go mm -hmm. and paint men you don't know nuts. Well it's only... <laughs> It's seven o'clock to half past eight. Really? Yes. Really? You are very energetic woman, Fern. Do all thank that. You. Don't yeah. say thank you. It's not a compliment, it's an accusation. <laughs> uh, so Lee's team. Is Gordon Stephen's ex-bandmate, David's hamster vendor, or Fern's nude model? Okay, uh, what do you think, Reginald? I don't think Fern had a time. I don't believe you would ever try to handle a hamster living or dead. <laughs> I think it's you, because you and this cat here, Gordon, y'all got the same eyebrow. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, Ken, you're going with Stephen as well? Yeah, yeah. So it's Stephen. Let's okay. go with Stephen. Uh, Gordon, would you like to reveal your true identity? My name is Gordon and I was a guitarist in a progressive rock band called <laughs> Aragon with Stephen and we did record <laughs> The Wizard's Dream. Thank you very much for coming along tonight. Yeah. Cheers. Gordon. <laughs> yes, the story was true. Uh, Gordon was Stephen's bandmate. And if you fancy listening to Wizard's Dream, simply log on to iTunes. There's literally tens of thousands of much better albums available <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points. Lee's team have three points. <laughs> which brings us to our final round called Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. And again, they don't know whether they're about to read out a true fact about themselves or a lie that we've made up and they've never seen before. So we will start with... <coughs> Lee. Last year, I was ordered to leave Blackpool Tower after I threw a sausage roll off the top. <laughs> <laughs> How were you discovered? Did someone see you... Up Security was at the top. And, they... and saw you... Why did you throw it? Well, because I'm a northern. And <laughs> I just thought the bin's over... You know, the bin was, was not it... inside. Why didn't you finish it? Because, actually, I'd already had one. This was my second. I was halfway through it, and I thought, no more for me. Were they hot sausage rolls? <laughs> you want, I'll give you the accurate heat of how they were. This hot. <laughs> Why did you throw it off the top? You're there, there's security there. It's a horrible thing to because do. Because someone, how fast is a hot or even quite hot sausage roll going to be moving by no, the time no, it you're hits wrong, David. some no, poor, no, 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 it wasn't morbidly quite hot. obese child I... down <laughs> on the promenade having a miserable time on holiday in Blackpool of all places, <laughs> and then you, he's just heard about the divorce but... of his parents, <laughs> consoling himself with another load of high sugar snacks, <laughs> and the next thing he knows, a warmish sausage roll. <laughs> Hit him slap in the face. <laughs> He's trying to eat the second sausage roll. David, let's yes. have a guess. I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't think he would. I think it's a lie. I think we think this is a lie. Yeah. You're all agreed. Yes. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay, Lee. Is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It's actually a lie. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee was not ordered to leave the Blackpool Tower after throwing a sausage roll off the top. As if anyone from the north would waste something wrapped in pastry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And next, it's David. As a child, at my grandparents' house, I had a little bell that I would ring if I wanted anything. <laughs> Why did you have a bell? Well, there was a bell. It was a pre-existent bell. There was a bell in the house, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. Only at the grandparents' house? Yes. Not at home? Because no. your parents no. didn't play that shit. No. Yeah. <laughs> at, the ho at home, you just sort of went... Um... <laughs> <laughs> so how six, old were you? six. What were the things you wanted when you rang the bell? More chips. <laughs> uh, a glass of orange squash sense of purpose in life. <laughs> was it both grandmother and grandfather that would come and wait on you hand and foot, or was it just one or the other? Uh, I was a small child. I was, sort of, <laughs> I was indulged to a certain extent, but then also to a certain extent there was, can you actually just stop ringing your bell now? <laughs> OK. So, Lee's team, what, what do you think? The parents I... could easily have had a bell, and the little brat could have just... <laughs> yeah. 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 I liked the bell. I liked ringing the bell. He liked ringing the bell. Is it true or is it a lie? <laughs> Reginald, delicious hunter. <laughs> um, well, sausage roll, I believe that... <laughs> I believe that there's a simplicity to the story that uh, rings true. I'll go with that. Go on, then. We'll say that that's true. You're saying it's true. David, is it true or is it a lie? Well, it is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes, it's true. As a child, David's grandparents' house did have a little bell that he would ring if he wanted anything. Ding-a-ling. Ah, uh, could I have a posher upbringing, please? <laughs> he, um... That's, that's a remarkable impression, cos it has the advantage of also sounding quite a lot like Ken Livingston. I thought that was a good one. You're absolutely right. As yeah. I did it, I thought, this isn't the best David Mitchell I've ever done. Right. <laughs> if it was going to be one of the good David Mitchells, it'd be a bit more like this. I don't know why anybody would think I would do that. Why would they think that? <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> uh, and next. <clears throat> Fern. Ooh. Possession. Ah, now you have a box under the desk we'd like you to get out, please. That's it. Open it up. Mm. This is my tea cosy. I take it absolutely everywhere with me because I can't stand a cold teapot. Um, for no reason at all. David, could you just put it on your head? <laughs> you all right? <sighs> <laughs> right, now get a big stick. George Carey! <laughs> <laughs> I feel quite important. I, can I have a little bell? <laughs> If you take it everywhere, why isn't it more grubby? Ooh, is it grubby? <laughs> <laughs> How hot do you like your tea? How hot? I, I, I don't like it when you go like this. Oh, uh, tongue's all burnt, and then the, the rest of the she day you can't you, taste man. anything. Mm -hmm. this I understand is, the language this is of the, 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 the miming scale. burn. Yeah. All right? Yeah. The rest but of I like humanity it, it's uses like... numbers to, you know, <laughs> temperature. You use mime. Because yes. <laughs> that would make sense. Is your tea all right? Yes, it's a number seven. <laughs> Maybe a six, I'm not sure. So, genuinely, sorry, genuinely, the idea of numbers denoting temperatures is new to you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that sounds yes. ridiculous? Oh, yes, it temperature is. Temperature is measured in units. But you don't say it's a seven, do you? I'm talking no, you don't to the lady, not the nutter. No, you don't want a seven. <laughs> ignore the... Who would, want a, who would want a seven? Anyway, a cup of... a seven? That's horrendously sorry, cold. <laughs> In whichever, in whichever scale. Oh. If, it's, if it's centigrade, it's too cold. If it's Fahrenheit, it's solid. <laughs> so, Lee, we need a guess, please. What do you think? Come on. Come on, man, come on. <laughs> Can you be equally cool? I think it's a lie. OK, so that's, that's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? Fern, is it true or is it a lie? It's true. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yes, it's true. That is Fern's tea cosy, and she takes it everywhere with her because she can't stand a cold teapot. Right? That Showbiz is... really is rock and roll, isn't it? <laughs> it's stashed full of skunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> and that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal tonight's score is a draw. David's team have five and Lee's team have five. <laughs> Of course, of course, it's uh, it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is Fern Britton. Hey. Yes, Fern Britton, whose gigantic waffles were as beautifully showcased tonight as they were on her 2003 Pilates video. <laughs> Good night. Welcome along to Would I Lie to You, the show all about lies and lying. Now, according to research, the most common lies are about affairs and money. So, men, if you do spend the night with another woman, don't make things worse by lying to your wife about how much she cost. <laughs> when you give someone a fake smile, you don't use the same set of muscles as when you smile at them genuinely. It's easy to tell the difference. A genuine smile is the one you get from your dear old mum as you walk up the path to the care home on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> a fake smile is the one you give her back. <laughs> so, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists take it in turns to read out a statement from the card in front of them, and to make it particularly difficult, they haven't seen the card yet, so they don't know if it contains a truth or a terrible, terrible lie that we've made up for them. Michael Ball is first up. Oh, Michael, great. what would you like to tell us? Thank you. I have a three-part ritual I have to adhere to before I go on stage. <laughs> David's team, how uh, true is this? OK, what, what are the three parts? Firstly, I, there's a sweet that I have to have before um, uh, I feel comfortable. A sweet. A sweet. Uh, it... Part two. Part two is. Uh, I may have to hurry. Is, <laughs> having to, is putting on a spray. Is, is spraying me with uh, so I smell Insecticide. nice. Insecticide. I smell yes. nice for the ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. spray. What spray? What spray? Uh, yeah. Madame Rocha. Ma because Madame... I'm playing, I'm in hairspray, and she's a woman, and okay. so I put. So that it's a recent thing. thing since you were in hairspray. Or... Uh, it, it depends. Uh, uh, yeah. It's theme. A different smell for every right. thing so I do. What if did you... you? What did you do when you were in cats? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I didn't do cats. What's the third part? And the third part. Tapping. <laughs> tapping. What? Tapping. 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 What do you tap? Tapping. Um, parts of my body. <laughs> I don't think he's really feel that. Can you demonstrate? Yes. Uh, you go. There, and yep. then you go there, and your hands. Right, tapping your hands. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we are. There are lots of people around the country, just like Michael, who need your help. Please send <laughs> whatever you can. Uh, David's team, what do you think? Uh, this thing about tapping, I I know about tapping, and you started doing it correctly, and then you stopped because I thought, are you giving too much away if you continue tapping correctly? But you didn't even do this. This is where doctors do it. It's probably not. Never if you have a lung disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, he's, he, he's never claimed to be a doctor, I think. <laughs> well, there was the once, but... Yeah. <laughs> that was just to get you to the next yeah, stage, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> 
There can't be a perfume for every character you play in musicals. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, but it could but be... That's what you're saying! No, I said for this character. <laughs> yeah, you're Yeah, wrong. Madame Rorschach, whatever you called yourself. Is it real? Yeah, but it's not one you'd associate with hairspray. I'd associate Charlie or something with hairspray. He does that as a dressing room as well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the old days. <laughs> yeah. so I... My feeling is that it's a lie at the moment. I, I, I think. think he's telling the truth. Yeah. So you drifting, when pushed you're drifting on the towards fingers, a lie? It was too vague, yes. Yeah, so... uh, well, it's 2 1. We reckon it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Yeah. Okay, Michael, what is the answer? It is, in fact, <laughs> the truth. Ah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, it's true. Michael does have a three-part ritual that he has to carry out before going on stage. Lots of stars have little rituals. Amy Winehouse always has a small glass of dry white wine. <laughs> and a large glass of brandy. <laughs> and then a litre and a half of meths. <laughs> Trini, you're next. Oh, OK. Marks and Spencer's mannequins are based on my body. Just, not, just the female one. I was going to say, not the male. <laughs> Surely. How did this work? Was it? Did you have a mould of your body? What you do is you do a, um, like a plaster of Paris, on your body. Hang on, say this really slowly. <laughs> a man <laughs> takes this gunk, oh. and he. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why did they want you? So I used to model. Is it the head as well, or just the body? No, they, the body, but the... Yeah. They didn't bother doing your head? No, they did my head, but it was... So they basically decided that you'd be the right body to advertise, but they went, we don't want the face, love. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> that, what, did you look different, like, when you were a model? Were, you, were they going, no, we'll go with the body, look. What's wrong with the face? <laughs> <laughs> I had acne, actually. I had very bad acne. Oh. Well, they could have sanded it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you. The, no, the model. I mean, the model. They cast the face and then they get a bit of light. It's grade two. Just shave off the acne. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt when they peel it off? Is it like, you know, when you pull a plaster off quickly? Is it before like that? they put on the plaster of Paris? You're wrapped in saran wrap. But then you'd get all the, the you'd get the, the the lumps, wouldn't you? No, you don't. I tell you, I've <laughs> had it done you a few do, times. You do. You do. You could, you, well, you think about it. I had it for a, a, a show I was in called The Woman in White, and it would all buckle, and and then if you pour something in on that, you'd get all the the lines on it. I'd have thought. Well, you could just sand it off like the acne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Lee, what do you think? All right. Why I don't think it's true is that surely mannequins come in different sizes, cos otherwise... No. No? No, clothes come in different sizes. <laughs> <laughs> and they put the right size on the mannequin to make them look the, as attractive as they possibly can. I love boys discussing fashion. <laughs> Wait, you got... Oh, I got Charlie's You off. got cast before, didn't you? you? You were cast for a big set of fake breasts for a show, weren't you? No. <laughs> that wasn't me. She was talking... He was talking to David. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sure you got fitted for a prosthetic <laughs> set of breasts for In a show. fantasy, darling. God, did, maybe well, I, because, did I because, dream that? Because for, if, if it, <laughs> that would be the body. We think that that's a lie. OK. Is it fact or fiction? <laughs> It is a lie. Marks and Spencer mannequins are not based on Trini's body. Um, but it's true, isn't it, that Susanna did provide the inspiration for their large sacks of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, your turn to confess. For a summer, I worked at a funeral director's that offered themed funerals. What's a <clears throat> themed funeral? Give, give us an example of a theme. Well, you can have um, a medieval one. How does a medieval <laughs> funeral work? You have it when you're 26. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was there was a king and queen. Right. Obviously. <laughs> who, who were the king and queen? The the sort the, of the, the departed person. The nearest people to the person who's died. <laughs> they dress up. Yes, yes, they oh. dress up. Oh, I see. So it's not just the dead person. Everyone's got to be no, into the no, no. no. The people <laughs> alive are dressed up, and the what? dead person's dead. He doesn't know. Well, well, you're you're not not you're too upset. <laughs> We've had medieval. Medieval. Could you give me three others? There was um, a Valentine's Day massacre one. Oh, come oh, on! Awesome. True. What did actually, that tell us? That actually called Valentine's Day massacre. <laughs> it's called the Blue Parrot. What? It was, well, the Blue Parrot is the name of the uh, supposed club that the 
hit the, all the, the <laughs> people. They're all believing it now. Look at that. <laughs> the St Valentine's Day massacre yeah. was, an, a, was a, an atrocity. Yeah. Why a Did funeral you make that is depressing enough? Why would you want to make it more depressing? It's not me personally. It was on the list. <laughs> it, what, what, what was beyond the pale? Like, if I came and said I want a cannibal-themed funeral... <laughs> There was one who came and wanted all the people to be serial killers. <laughs> but dressed as different I just realised you yeah. said cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely thought you said cannon and ball. <laughs> 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 so what are you talking about? He's dead! <laughs> <laughs> he is dead! <laughs> Did you ever get a point where there was, like, another regular funeral going on at the same time and maybe they were slightly upset to look over and see people in zany It's a Knockout costumes <laughs> burning a corpse into the ground? There were, it was only ever at crematorium, it wasn't ever burials. So it was quite private. What if they said before the crematorium, um, he was a big fan of bonfire night, can you stuff it <laughs> with fireworks, Catherine wheels, the lot, and then when it goes behind the curtain... <laughs> <laughs> pin the coffin to a wall and watch it spin round as a flame spins round. <laughs> So, Lee, what, what are you saying? Do you What's know the what? decision? I'm, just, I am so, I'm getting genuinely annoyed by this, cos I know we've got to say it's a lie. Cos if we say true and it's a lie, we'll everyone look. at home is going to be going, what? how could that yeah. possibly be true? <laughs> and yet there's a massive voice in my head going, saying this true. is true. I know exactly what you're saying. Really? Yeah, yeah there is. But I, ju I just... The St Valentine's Day <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know it sounds ludicrous. Lee Mack, make a decision. What is it? Say it's common sense. sense. Yeah, it's a lie. Let's not look stupid. All right, go on. We'll say it's a lie. <laughs> Saying it's a lie. OK, Reese. fact or fiction? It is... lie. Oh! oh my God. God. No! <laughs> it is indeed a lie. Uh, Reese didn't used to work at a funeral directors that offered themed funerals. Uh, actually, I plan to put my ashes while still hot in one of those council wheelie bins. That'll show them. <laughs> uh, Charlie Brooker, you're up next. For six years, I pretended to a girlfriend that I was partially deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Seems reasonable enough. Um, <laughs> David's team, what do you think? After how many years of going out with her did this start? Um, shamefully quickly. <laughs> was by pretending to be partially deaf how you clinched the deal early on? <laughs> Are you saying I have to use pity? <laughs> to attract people? I'm saying you might have used pity. <laughs> Well, I'm not above it. <laughs> Did she have a very irritating habit that precipitated your going deaf? Yes, talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was talking about something that was very important to her, some emotional thing. Right. And um, she said, you weren't listening to me, and got very upset, started crying, and so I thought, I'll lie <laughs> and tell her I'm deaf in one ear. Which so, I did. So and, I... and at that point, what you're saying to her is, I, I didn't hear anything because I'm deaf in one ear. I thought we were sitting together in silence. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I thought was happening. No, I, I had my attention taken up with something else and I, I, I said it what apologetically. Was that? Stroking his guide dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he called it, anyway. <laughs> Did you elaborate what? on why you were deaf in the ear after you had yeah. to go along? What, what, was um, your, what was your reason? I said that when I was a child, I had nearly drowned when I was, like, four in a swimming pool and this had left me deaf in one ear. I, I clearly don't try shaking my head. And yeah. I felt quite bad cos I, I told the lie early on and then I had to maintain it. So did you tell her ever after the 60s or did the relationship just break up and you never told her? I never told her. Right. I, t I didn't tell her. I told... I, I wrote about it in a newspaper oh. column. <laughs> That's nice. Right. Well, she's a Geordie, they're robust. <laughs> so... Oh. Actually, to be fair, that, now that adds credence to the fact he didn't want to hear her, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to put myself in the position of that woman. Sure Six years! Bad, You've lied. You've lied to me. A big lie? It's quite a big lie. You'd be surprised how often it doesn't come up. Now, that... <laughs> now that's, a, yeah. that's a big that's lie. lie. <laughs> And the advantage is, after telling that lie, half the time it comes up, <laughs> you can pretend you haven't heard. <laughs> so what do you think? So you think it's... A lie. You think it's a lie? Horrifically, I think it's true. I think it might be true. You think it's true? Charlie, is it truth or lie? <sighs> it's, uh, it's true. Everything, everything that you just told us is true. Yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid it is. And it was terrible. It was such a burden. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, poor oh, you! Yeah. <laughs> we, for the first time I in introduced her to my parents, we're going down to meet them on the train. I suddenly thought, oh, God, she's going to mention the... And so I had to turn round to her and say, don't bring it up, my mother blames herself. And... <laughs> I didn't want to lose her. I was desperate. Having told this terrible lie, I was locked into it. I could I didn't tell her I was going to... Can't you see? The fact <laughs> don't you find that moving? <laughs> you, cold-hearted monster! I'm not having this! <laughs> I, you can't call us cold-hearted. You do the... You, you've People lived a six-year People make mistakes, David! <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for which they must be punished! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, it's, uh, it's amazingly true. Uh, Charlie did pretend to a girlfriend for six cruel years <laughs> that he was partially deaf. Uh, ironically, like all his other girlfriends, she was partially sighted. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth. I'll be offering the team some bizarre celebrity facts, but are they true or did we get them from Wikipedia? <laughs> Lee's team, take a look at this clip. Um, we do a bigger one for the trucker, for the actual, the really hungry person, which consists of a St. Kidney pie, peas, tomatoes, chips, mushrooms, fried potatoes, two thick bread and butter, and it comes up really heaped well up on a plate. Like <coughs> egg and chips, bacon and chips, sausage and chips, corned beef and chips, <laughs> egg, bacon and chips, everything what goes with the chips. <laughs> I uh, should say, what they didn't show you there was the toilet where Gillian McKeith was spending one of the happiest days of her <laughs> life. <laughs> so here's the uh, related fact, right, for Lee's team. Christina Aguilera once followed a strict diet where every meal had four food items. One crunchy, one soft, one hot and one cold. Lee's team, could that be true? That's not very specific, is it? There are more specifics. They had to be bold coloured, you know. Example meal, right? Raw red pepper, which would be red and cold. Steamed broccoli, which would count for green and hot. Scrambled eggs, yellow and hot. And raw carrot sticks, which, as we all know, are orange and cold. They're not cold, they're crunchy. That's two crunchy pepper's things. Crunchy. The pepper's they're cold. Not cold as well, unless you've heated them up. Yes, I, I know, but, they're so... soft, but, but, it, but <laughs> the system is one crunchy, one soft, one hot, one cold. So don't, don't start talking about something that might coincidentally be cold and crunchy. Yes. That's just confusing. Its selling point was its crunchiness, I'll give you that. In, 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 this, instance, in this instance, the carrots there playing the crunchy the role. The crunchy role. And could say to the pepper, oh, actually, I've, I've done cold as well, but yeah. today I'm, I'm on crunchy. All oh, right, I've been crunchy, but today I'm cold. You know. But, but, any, but any food can be served in all of those ways. You're quite right. Well, no, a grape cannot be crunchy, you idiot. Have you ever <laughs> eaten the pits? Don't talk to Michael Ball yeah. like that. Yeah. He was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. What have you ever done? What if you froze a grape? Hey, listen, I sat through him in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> I know worked harder. It's all right, I've an Olivier it's... Award. <laughs> I, think, I think it's true. Because that's the sort of stupid thing that people like her do to give their life some purpose and meaning <laughs> is come up with a set of arbitrary rules, something for them to think about while they're sitting on their thin asses. <laughs> OK, I think it's... I think it's true. Oh, go on, I'll go with my team on this one and say that that's the truth. You're saying it's true? OK. Uh, it is true. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> True, Christina will go to any lengths to maintain that slightly slutty look we've all come to know and love. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, um, Lee's team is in the lead by four points to two. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My. We're about to bring on a mystery guest that each of Lee's team will claim to have a special relationship with, but only one of them will be telling the truth, and it's up to David's team to decide who. So, please, welcome this week's special guest, Donna. <laughs> so, Charlie first, uh, what is Donna to you? Uh, this is Donna, who's teaching me basic home maintenance. <laughs> All right, uh, Lee, what, what, what is Donna to you? This is Donna, and she saved my life when she threw me a life belt after I fell off my boat. <laughs> OK. Uh, Michael, what is Donna to you? Uh, this is Donna. She uh, has been my number one super fan since she was 17. Uh, she even has a toilet seat cover 
with my face on it. <laughs> Michael has a fan. <laughs> David's team, who would you like to start with? Michael, when did you start your relationship with your fan? Uh, I, I have a relationship with, with most of my fans. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get to know uh, Donna? Yeah. I, I've uh, seen her at the uh, uh, front of crowds House. of audiences yeah. that have come and waited at stage doors and you sign autographs and you stop and you have a so chat. Some, and some shows only Donna turns only up. Only Donna is there. <laughs> So what makes Donna your number one fan? Well, a number of things. I released a, a, a charity single, and so she went and bought them all in a shop and then sold them on at her school. Isn't that illegal? <laughs> at open air concerts, she'll, she'll always try and be the first down the front, so she'll go into training prior to uh, <laughs> the gig so that she can get there first. Do you have, like, a number two fan and a number three fan? Well, it, it's... Um, no. No, every, <laughs> everyone's number one. Oh. <laughs> um, Charlie, what sort of home maintenance tips are you being given? Very, very basic ones. My home's a mess and I'm not very good at sort of maintaining, you know, looking after anything in my house. So an ex-girlfriend um, paid for me to have these uh, lessons where I basically learn... It's, it's basic stuff. Do you mean, like, how to change a plug? Yes, well, it's, yes, that was one of the first things we did. Right. I've, I've only, to be honest, I've only gone three times, and I. I where where I, do you go? Where did you go? Gone where? Yeah. She's just in a community you, centre down the road. And Are you doing it for a magazine article? No, so, no I'm doing it because I'm a pathetic human. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, what is the first rule of Home Maintenance Club? <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk about Home Maintenance Club. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, Lead. Uh, yeah. Tell us the story of the, your boating trip. <laughs> where, where was the boat? The boat was on the River Thames. Were you by yourself? Uh, well, I was actually with my dog and one other person. Uh, <laughs> Why does the dog come first? <laughs> what? Oh, right. Why does the dog so... come first? That's exactly what my wife says. Right. <laughs> Why do you introduce me like that all the time? Like, <laughs> this is my dog Pickles and one other and person. One other person. <laughs> Who was the other person? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> How fast a boat is this? I'm not a boat well, expert. Well, it's a, a twin-engine, 28-foot Furline Sun Fury, and as we all know, they can go up to 45 knots, but on the Thames, as we all know, you can't break six knots. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of how fast six knots is, if someone is walking beside you <laughs> and you wave to them, you're committed to it for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, how did you fall in? Well, I was, I, was, I was actually trying to uh, go round the, the side of the boat to, to undo the gas canister at the front so we could make a cup of tea, and <laughs> I, I went down the side and slipped. Why didn't your wife try to save you? Yeah. She can't swim. And what's Donna got to do with it? She hasn't appeared yet in this story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Donna was on another boat coming the other way, and I slipped in, and then she just threw me the ring. And she did so what? your wife, because she can't swim, also won't throw you a life <laughs> So what do you say? Well, what, what is she? Trini. I think when Donna came in, the only person who didn't look at her was the guy in the middle. <laughs> his name is... I'm his name is Lee, Lee Mack. Yeah. Trini! He's a, he's a popular Trini, comedian. Will you stop treating me like staff? No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide between Michael and Lee. I don't believe Lee would go boating very much. Um, <laughs> Why wouldn't I go boating very much? Um, Just doesn't well, suit you. Why? <laughs> All right, then she saved me when I was trying to chase after a whippet. <laughs> <laughs> Rhys, do you have any, uh, any suspicions which way this should go? I think um, that Lee is telling the truth. You think Lee? Yeah. OK, okay but let's your go answer? with Lee. OK, Donna. Would you reveal your true identity? I'm Michael's number one fan. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Um, look at this. Oh, You've got it. We say congratulations to Donna and thank you very much indeed for coming, Donna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Which uh, brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. Uh, David's team are currently behind, so we're going to give them one last chance to catch up, starting with... That's David. 
three members of the cabinet subscribe to my Twitter feed. Please explain for, for some of the less with it crowd <laughs> what a Twitter is. Well, it's a, Twitter is a website where you can essentially leave messages of up to 140 characters. All right. Okay. Um, and no longer. OK, uh, Lee Steen. You made it sound so dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why it's so popular. I can't. Why did you sign up? Because someone on it was impersonating me. What? Someone on Twitter was pretending to be me and putting messages on it like going to peep show production meeting, everyone there is an asshole. <laughs> which I did not wish to be published under my name. And who are, the, who are the cabinet ministers? They are uh, Andy Burnham, the oh, yeah. culture secretary, Alistair Darling, who is the chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say and Exchequer like that again? Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> And Alan Johnson. If this is true, is it any wonder the financial crisis we're in? <laughs> How many followers do you have? About 27,000. What sort of information would you be giving that's so interesting that they're going to sign up to follow you, of all the people in the country? I think you, you can follow more... That, that sounded really confrontational. You really are full of nasty... <laughs> 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 a very popular young man in the current entertainment scene. And a lot of people enjoy his work and they want to get close to him and they follow him. He's been on Question Time. He's been on I'm, Question Time, I'm a major time, political force, Charlie. <laughs> He's... Oh, wait, wait, let's have a guess. It's a lie. I th That's I a think lie. it could be true. I think, I think the whole team lie. It's a lie. If anybody is talking through the internet to Cabinet members, it's Dave Mitchell. He's not talking. He never... I'm on that. He never... Like, he doesn't really say much. You're frankly, you're boring on there. <laughs> I think it might be true. Are you well, saying true? I, you can say that if you want to lose the game. <laughs> OK, it's... <laughs> it's a lie. OK. You no, think I think lie, it's a lie. Charlie? It must be a lie. I'm I don't know anything. absolutely convinced it's a lie. I think it's true, it's true and I'm, I'm going to go with you, you two. But particularly you, if it right. goes wrong. <laughs> oh, OK, you're saying it's a lie. David, is it true? It is a lie. Oh. Uh, it is a lie. Very big lie. Uh, there are not three members of the Cabinet who subscribe to David's Twitter feed. Uh, I, myself, don't get all the fuss about Twitter. I think people have forgotten the simple pleasure of just sitting down and talking to friends on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> and next... <coughs> uh, it's uh, Lee. <clears throat> I kept my car running for t two months by cracking an egg into it every day. David's team, is that possible? When you say cracking eggs into it, where do you mean in...? In the petrol tank or in the... Oh, in the petrol tank. Are oh, you a fool? <laughs> Do you know nothing of cars? No, not egg, not egg running cars. Well, <laughs> if you, in a car you have um, a radiator. If the, if the radiator cracks, all the water comes out. Yeah. But, interestingly, if you put an egg in the radiator, <laughs> it, it goes... it congeals. And it seals the hole in the radiator because the, the egg cuts and... So why didn't you go and get it fixed? Well, yeah, that's a good much. question. See, Trini, I couldn't afford it. So I thought, it's about 100, 150 quid to get the radiator replaced now. It was my first car. So the eggs it, must have cost what? you 100 quid. No, no, they weren't free range, darling. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking really so cool you did, eggs. A, did you do an egg a day? Cruel and cheap, they used to be called. Did you do an egg a day? <laughs> I can pump out 50 a day, was the advert. <laughs> <laughs> who, needs, who needs to move his head? That's where the advert is. <laughs> <laughs> who needs to move his head? 50 a day, that's me. <laughs> so what do you think? Is it true or is it a lie? Can't be true. What do you think? I think it's a lie. Oh, OK, David. lie. You're saying it's a lie. Uh, Lee, tell us the truth. It is, in fact. True. Ah! <laughs> well done. Oh, yes. Very okay. good. It's, uh, it's very, very true indeed. Lee Mack's motto is if there's a job worth doing, it's worth doing haphazardly with some farm produce. <laughs> <laughs> And that noise uh, signals time's up, and it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that. Tonight's winners are Lee's team by a massive nine points to two. It's not just a team game anymore. My individual liar of the week is Michael Ball. Oh, that's very funny. Yes. Oh, that's very remarkable. Michael Ball, whose uh, biggest lie prior to tonight was love changes everything. I, <laughs> I can tell you from experience, Michael, that what actually changes everything is having your girlfriend come home to find you prancing around the bedroom in her underwear. <laughs> Good night.